really interesting. Yeah, really interesting how he considered the bullet so heavily because people just under bluff and he's born of all the tournaments. It's really, really interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, what are his bluffs? You know, like, if we really think about it, like, uh, sure, ace high, like, ace high has some showdown value if he had ace five. And when he raises the turn with maybe some backdoor diamond draw or something like that, he actually gets called in on this kind of board. Like, what, what hands do you have with your folding? Um, and it's going to have some misdraws and things too. So I think calling is the only option myself. Let's see if Boogaloo uh, got away from it. Ooh, call a six. So this is close between call. Really interesting. So call a six, raise a 7,500 is 10 points. And I'm going to say he said that because this is a very bad player. And so he thinks the very bad player is going to stack off here with worse queens a lot. I'm going to guarantee that's what he's going to say. Very interesting, though. I thought call for sure was the right answer. I never am in this spot. I, just, I don't know. Um, interesting spot, too. I, I think this is a little bit of a lesson for everyone out there, too. A lot of times, the hands we want to float with, like this one, are better as, as raises. So this kind of falls in that category. Yeah, and he was kind of an echo chamber for us there, saying, you know, we just get better hands to call and worse to Yep. Like he's going to have some gut shots in his hand. He's going to have spade draws. He's going to have King X. And we kind of know, I mean, we kind of identify kind of what cards are going to be bad for us on future streets. And we, we, we're aware how to proceed on those cards. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's a very good point. Man. You right, you right, you right. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. You didn't say anything. You won. Just, yeah. just straight out. This you won. I, I, I just, you know, I'm just spewing. All right, so, ooh, look at this. You're not opening this. <laughs> <laughs> you just looked at this. You're not opening Button this. Button cut off, high low jack. End of the gun one. You are right. Come on now. Okay. I am. <laughs> so, let's see if he... <laughs> He's got to open it or there wouldn't be a hand. <laughs> You, yeah, you I'm already down on points. <laughs> you're already down on points in real life. Now, obviously, you're gonna cheat, but <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna evolve. <laughs> you're gonna yeah, you're gonna adapt, right? <laughs> All right, let's play. I am going to cry if he says he's folding here. <laughs> like, if he's like, yeah, you should be folding this in this kind of tournament, and you were actually right. All right, cool. Wah, wah. Ah! I just want to say for the record, that this is the best three point score I've ever gotten in my life. Because the right answer was fold. The right <laughs> But you heard what you said yes. about the table. This is a 3K. Here comes the excuses. 10 the points excuses fold. To it open. Says right if your here. table is particularly tight and weak, welcome to the $5 2K world. I mean, you know, the $11 10K. I'm opening this. Yeah, for sure. This is the best three <laughs> points of my life. Um, that's hilarious. Uh, and everybody's pretty. Nailed it. What the hell kind of play is that between Queen? Who in the... <laughs> Who does that? Who the hell? <laughs> uh, yeah, so that Jonathan Little's an absolute crusher, so it's nice to have him. Yeah, I agree, and I He's always love coaching. playing right after sessions like this because I feel like my, my brain's warmed up. I'm thinking through things, and, and so it's a good way to start your session for sure. All right, All right guys, this is it. What's up, Mike? You want to give a gist? He was saying Narco Cop was playing about, de-pipping about 28% of hands. He had been very aggressive in this uh, $10 buy-in, and here are the options to fold, to call, to raise to $1,200, raise to... What? Wait a minute, he made it 800, and my man's given options to 12 and 1400 ammo. So yep. it's already getting uh, kind of spicy. That's so nasty. To be on the site with these other crushers, you know, well-known poker public figures is pretty exciting, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I didn't mention that when I was kind of giving a little intro here too. You know, Assassinato, Matt Affleck, John Little, um, all coaches on the site, so very highly respectable. Quality poker content. Yep, Evan Jarvis as well, you know, I'm sure. number Evan Jarvis, Matt Affleck, Assassinato, John Little.
Uh, so I guess that just makes sense. He just had the ace of clubs in his hand. That's interesting, though. I that thought that was interesting. You, you didn't do that bad. 45. I like how you just pat me on the back. You didn't do that bad. Well, yeah, good job, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> the back. I, uh, remember, I got the higher score in the first one. I got the higher score in the first one. So, you know, we're one for one, buddy. I just want to know. I'm calling, guys. <laughs> Let's see if we're good. Similar situation. I think it's pretty Alright guys, we're checking I guess. Oh for fuck's sake. When you're facing a min raise or just a touch more than a min raise and there's an anti in play, which is gonna be the case in most tournaments I think going forward, you want to defend pretty wide. If your opponent's making a two all right, cool. Uh, you going 1400? I'm going 1400, guys. I'm gonna go call with the armor just to that. All right, and I would fold in game though, for the record, in case that's the <laughs> for winning it. Uh, you won. <laughs> you win. I, 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 I have to concede. <laughs> you win. 14k. Uh, 14k, let's do it. Let's do it. Really interesting. Um, wow. Wow. Yeah, really interesting how he considered the fold so heavily because people just under bluff and he's born of all the tournaments. It's really, really interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, what are his bluffs? You know, like if we really think about it, like uh, sure, ace high, like ace high has some showdown value if you had ace five. And when he raises the turn with maybe some backdoor diamond draw or something like that, and it actually gets called in on this kind of board, like. What, what hands do you have that you're folding? Um, and it's gonna have some misdraws and things too. So I think calling is the only option myself. Let's see if Boogaloo uh, got away from it. Ooh, call a six. So this is R close between call. Really interesting. So call a six, raise a 7,500 is 10 points. And I'm gonna say he said that because this is a very bad player. And so he thinks the very bad player is gonna stack off here with horse queens a lot. I guarantee that's what he's going to say. Very interesting, though. I thought call for sure. All right, guys, we are live with the one and only Greg the Fossil Man Rimmer. Let me get all these pictures I had open out of the way. There we go. Uh, welcome, guys. PC.com study stream Saturday, every Saturday, noon Eastern. Um, this time we have special guest, main event champion, Greg Rimmer. Say hi, Greg. Oh, no. Uh, he's muted. He's muted again. What happened? <laughs> it seems to happen randomly because it's go. not. I've, I'm not clicking it. <laughs> right. He's live now. How you doing, Greg? I'm all right. How you guys doing? I'm doing really Good, well. Buddy. Thank Good. you so much for doing this with us. Um, I was saying a funny story. Um, Greg and I were on Team USA together in 2009. Um, something I free rolled my way into off Poker Stars, and um, someone saw that on the replay on Twitch and tagged us both. And so I took a shot in the dark and asked him to join us. And Greg was nice enough to say yes right away. So uh, super appreciative of you uh, being so accessible and, and this being so cool. This is a, a huge moment for us. So thank you so much, Greg. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, we're going to have some fun today, guys. We are going to do this a little differently. Um, I'm going to get this ready right now while I talk. Uh, we are going to have you guys compete um, for some prizes this time. I'm going to draw a random viewer from my stream and a random viewer from Crazy Six's stream. And then we'll have you guys take the quiz and use your answers for points. Um, what happens if they push? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe we do a one question face off. We'll pick a, the next quiz and do whoever gets the next one. Tiebreaker points. Well, since we're going to do four of them, 
do it four times, that would mean we have to roll it over and have two people competing at the same time. Yeah, we'll figure it out. That's fine. That's fine. We'll do that. that we'll cross that bridge when we get there. question yesterday, Sixes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Exodus Point PC in my chat. Exodus Point PC in Sixes chat for a link to PokerCoaching.com where uh, you can get all this great content produced by Jonathan Little with a host of great coaches. Tristan Wade, Acevedo, Sassianato, Matt Affleck. Uh, I'm going to miss a bunch of them. Lexi Gavin, Evan Jars is a huge, huge list. Barrage Jaka, low stakes to mid stakes online stuff by me <laughs> and by my man, Crazy Sixes. X Mitch, my PC in the chat to get that stuff. You can sign up for free, get 20 free quizzes, charts for big blinds, uh, 100, I'm sorry, charts for 100 big blinds or more, and a bunch of homeworks and whatnot. So make sure you check that out as well. Greg also has his site. Um, as well, and if you do X Mitch Point guest in the chat, you will see a link to his Twitter yep. and to his Fossil Man Poker website where you can contact him for coaching. You can buy his book, you can get a fossil, you can get some, some glasses, you can get all the words. So <laughs> check all that stuff out as well. I shouldn't push the glasses much because I'm almost out of those. Uh oh, so uh -oh. either yeah. get them while they're hot before you're uh, Shit out of life. <laughs> well, bo bo books and fossils are easy to come by. There you go. Awesome. There you go. There you go. Anything you want to plug? Anything else you're working on, Greg? You would like to uh, plug before we get into the quizzes? Uh, what's been out with you, buddy? Um, I would say the book's the big thing, and that's the main plus of this whole COVID mess that we're all in together. Um, right. I've I published my first book last year, Fossil Man's Winning Tournament Strategies, and. You know, I, I do a lot of live seminars throughout the country. So these are like full day events. And typically, you know, I've got 30 50 to 50 students. We'll do a morning seminar. And then in the afternoon, we do live hand labs. So I'll have co-instructors. So like if I was near where one of you guys lived, I'd be like, oh, maybe I hire one of you to come in for the afternoon. One coach per table. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we had 30 students, it'd be like you, you two and me as the three coaches, we deal at each table, the students play against each other, and then we critique their play at the end of the hand. Okay. And so I wrote my book and it's like, okay, you know, the book is kind of like the morning lecture. And then I thought, let's do a second book. That's more like the afternoon. So I've pulled all my old hands. I've rewatched the 2004 World Series of Poker DVD, um, you know, f f hands from my final table this January at the HPT that I won. Uh, the 2004 Tournament of Champions, uh, hands that I've posted on Share My Pair over the last few years. And, and so each of those hands, I'm going to have it available, you know, the description in the book, like a QR code or something like that. So you can go to the Share My Pair video to watch the hand. Ah. And then, you know, several pages of critique where I will point out what I did wrong <laughs> as well as what I liked. Um, and then talking about it from the opponent's point of view and why I think they made good or bad decisions. Um, and then I realized, well, wait, that tournament I just won in January at the uh, HPT in Chicago, um, you know, we had 55 hands of heads up because you can go watch the live stream on YouTube for the HPT's YouTube channel. And I, so now I'm actually working on two new books. The first one that I've just described and then the second book's going to focus on heads up play. So I'm going to have all 55 of those hands in there, as well as some opening chapters of general discussion of heads up strategy. So those will be coming out at some point, not for quite a while. The current book's available. You can get it at DNB Publishing. You can get it at Amazon, maybe even your local bookstore. Um, and if anyone's looking for personal coaching, I'm doing a lot more of that now since I got so much time. You know, it's hard in the past because I travel a lot. I go around to play these tournaments all over the place. And, you know, if you were a student, you might like, well, I don't want to wait a few more weeks for our next lesson because you're busy. Right. So I had never taken on too many students, but now I'm doing stuff like this. You know, I'll Zoom with someone and talk with them for an hour, go over their hands they've had difficulty with, whatever. It's interesting. Yeah, you gave me a flashback uh, when you and I, we took fourth in the World Cup that year. It was the year the year after you won, unfortunately. <laughs> and uh, I told oh, okay. you. okay. <laughs> I was confusing the two years because yeah, I was I thinking was... you were the coach of the year before. No, no, I was in the second year. And uh, it was you, me, Sean Deeb, Ben Zamani, and um, another free roll winner. And uh, after the fact, it was the next day where we were hanging out and you and I were having a beer. 
and I told you that I wanted to reinvest in myself and get my first poker training. And at the time, Stars had poker uh, had like a poker school type of thing with uh, uh, you were in there and Negranu <coughs> and um, the CIA guy was talking about tells. Forgetting his name. Yeah. Um, jo- so, Joe Navarro. Uh, there you go, Joe Navarro. And I told you that I wanted to reinvest that money that I had wanted myself. And you said, you know what? Hang on a second. Let me make a phone call. And you jumped on your cell phone right there at the bar. And you said, show up tomorrow at 8 o'clock. And I got into the <laughs> poker school. And then after the fact, we did that live train that you happened to talk about. And it was actually you at my table. You were sitting in the dealer seat. And we all got dealt hands. And when the hand was over, we all kept our hands. And we flipped the cards over. And then you would critique, you know, you did this right, you did this wrong, you did this right, you did this wrong. Uh, it was a really great experience. Um, so I've actually lived through that uh, training. It's fantastic, guys. You should definitely check it out. Uh, Greg's book, also on Thank my you. screen. If you want to see it, there's a copy of the a picture of it. Um, for you guys to check out Fossil Man's winning tournament strategies and also exclamation point guests in the chat, we'll give you a link to the Fossil Man Poker website where you can get all that stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, that's interesting, man. That's awesome to hear. I think that's a cool format. You don't hear a lot. Um, whoops. Um, so yeah, I think it's very unique and uh, would provide a lot of value, especially to some of the newer players who don't have a lot of experience playing live or new to the game. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think it's great. Absolutely. All right, guys. Um, so sixes, you wanna? I got a bunch of people in my chat already. I got about sixty viewers or so right now. You wanna run a competition now to see who gets to play against who? Yeah, this will be very quick. So what we would like to do while we're looking for a quiz is to just put, you know, um, type poker coaching in my chat, um, and then I'm gonna roll it pretty quick, like in two minutes. Since you're gonna do that. Um, type poker coaching in chat um, to enter. If you would like to compete, um, we're going to take your answers uh, for these quizzes. And then, you know, you're going to face off in my chat versus whoever wins the giveaway in Toad's chat. Cool. So give me yeah, um, there we go. just two seconds here so that I can do it the same way you're doing it. Uh, keyword poker enter, coaching. True enter. All right, guys, poker coaching <laughs> in my chat as well. And you will be eligible to battle it out. Uh, this is going to be for an ebook, or an ebook copy of Greg's book. Even though that didn't sound right, I think you get the point. And I see them streaming through the chat, guys. So we're going to make it pretty quick. <laughs> uh, while we're doing that, we can go down memory lane. I, I, I was a little prepared and, and, and excited myself, Greg. I don't know if you can see my screen, but I have I have some fun pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you picked one of me that it. Because it gets squashed down, right. you know, it's not like the normal, it gets squashed down, it, it really makes me look even better. Oh, no, I'm sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> yeah, you see, when this picture, and you had it squished down, like, so instead of these dimensions, <laughs> it was that wide, but like, short you know, <laughs> yeah, it was like the whole image got shortened, and I'm like, you know, I, I look good enough already, you don't need to squat it down and sorry about that. make me look even thicker. I'm sorry about that. Fun pictures of me and Greg <laughs> at the TV table in 2009. It's hard. You would have to know that that was us, though. Yeah. That's you got one. the back of my head, and you got a big side shot of you. This is before digital cameras were a thing. So this is my little roll-up camera. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 2009. Uh, let me see if I can pull those up. I'm going to pull up There's the your team. stream. So, yeah, fun stuff from 2009, guys. There's the Team USA picture. Fun stuff. All right, guys, let's... uh. Get rid of that. Let's draw the winner. I'm ready when you are. I am ready. Get in there. Poker coaching last 10 seconds to get in there. We got 13 eligible. And let's do it. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. Goal 34 ice is the winner of mine. So goal, this is how we're going to do this, man. We're going to pick a random quiz here. Right now I'm going to go to the quiz <laughs> section. Uh, we'll ask you what you're going to do first, goal. And then um, we'll take uh, a poll from the audience what they're going to do. And then uh, we'll say what we're going to do. And then no matter what we say, we're going to go with your option because your points are going to count against whoever's rolling in Sixes Stream. Who's the winner? Uh, BQBBQ. It's Bob. There you go. From there the Monday go. study. Be right. ready, son. All right, man. Uh, where do you want to start? Uh, you want to start with Jonathan Little and keep it nice and easy? Yeah, let's keep it nice, easy. We know what we're going to get. So, yeah, let's run this uh, JLs. Uh, yeah, 890. Let's do it. All right, yeah, let's make sure to give them an opportunity, uh, whoever won in your chat and mine, yep. an opportunity to answer first, and that's going to stick, and then we'll get Greg and us and so on and so forth. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's let do it. get to the right screen here. I am ready to play when you are. Let's do it. 
Here we have pocket sevens facing a four big blind raise from a tight player under the gun plus one. All right. Should we fold, call, re-raise to 4,000, or re-raise to 6,000? All right, guys. Seven one says, finally woke up enough to, what is up? How you doing, seven one? You picked a good day, guy. You picked a good day. Uh, right now, I see some calls streaming in the chat. Uh, Gold for Ice, what are you going to do? BQ, what are we doing in this spot, my dude? Call from Yander, call from Keo, call from Cyrus, call from Mrs. Ginger. Seeing a lot of calls, yeah. Call, 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 BQ was calling as well. So we got a call from both players. And um, Greg, what would you what do you like in this spot, Greg? So if I'm seeing this right, they're like about 30,000 chips deep, and it's a raise from 300 to 1,200. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, 79 bigs, 23,800 is their uh, stack behind. Yeah, and it describes the razor is tight and he's under the gun. So obviously this is a great spot to just call because you're just going to set mine. If you don't flop a set, you're probably done with this hand because his range is going to have so many overpairs to your sevens. Yeah, totally agree. And All also right. like for future streets are going to be tough to play out of position. All that stuff so pure set mine seems pretty good uh goal says call what do you think six is anything that no i think we just can call here yeah i mean short sure, will be just set mine but there may be boards that are pretty good for our big blind range where we can continue for one and he may not uh, be inclined to double barrel on some run outs which is going to give us you know with just some high cards on really low board so pretty easy call i think we can still win this pot if we don't win a seven sometimes um, but yeah, let's call and see how he wants to. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I see a re raise in the chat. Uh oh. That came to 4K as well. I see you. Who's that? Oh, that's Fuzzy Cable Guy. I see him too. <laughs> no, well, no, it's uh, Dank Nugs. Also, one thing for the giveaway is you must be following my and Toast channel. Yeah, just make, make sure, sure you, you follow hit that so follow button, like boys. Let's see. Right yep. about there. Yep. Right, guys, so both players call. Let's do it. Yep. Basing a four big blind raise in a $5,000 buy in tournament, by the way. Alarm bell should already be going off in your head. This is probably a recreational player who is just raising big because he has a big hand. And if he has a big hand, then I'm definitely not three betting. I'm just always calling and always trying to flop a good hand. So we flop an interesting one. Eight, five, four. We check, and now the opponent blasts it. 2,400. All right. Should we fold, call, raise to 7,000? Or go all in. Awesome. Uh, Toast says your personal mic might go up like 20%. Um, I will try that, except my mic's blasted. Cool. Um, interesting. We talked about just set mining, and then we caught like one of the few flops that's kind of <laughs> interesting. Yeah, this is the one. We're not having a seven. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, this is a lot different than if it just was like deuce three jack or. Yeah, you yeah, know, much something, jack, right? You know. Yeah. All right, guys, what are you going to do out there? Facing the 2400, I already see some calls. I see some raises, too. Uh, What's your go, guy doing? Go has the six is mafia. Again. He's, still, he's still thinking it out. BQ's calling. Snap calls as well, one of the first. I see you, BQ. Ready. Dunner's calling. Ship's leaning call. Jonesy, what's up, buddy? Draining, my dude. I see mostly calls. Right. Stinky raising at 7K. MD I border see. raising at 7K. Matt says, raise fold. Uh, we beat all the Broadway C-bets and flush draws, which have good equity, so I think we raise fold this. He's trying to go for some protection. Go okay, for says call, so he is our <laughs> man of the hour. <laughs> all right, yeah, I'm seeing some 7Ks, man. The uh, Sixes Mafia is feeling um, a little feisty this morning, my goodness. Uh, so Ace to Your Head, 7K. Dink Nugs is 7K. And Texan is 7K. What are yeah, our contestants uh, picking? Uh, they contestants both... said call on, on my side. Yeah, my side said call as well. The contestants are pick, say both said call again. But there's a handful of raises in my chat. Um, trying to get some protection. Um, I don't know if we're getting value Frosty. from much worse, though. <laughs> Silly, um, I think, like, even overs with hearts uh, have us beat right now pretty bad. So I think I'm on team call myself. What do you think? Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting spot. I mean... I don't like any of the choices, so right. it's one of those. It's like folding, folding seems way too tight. Calling seems like, you know, now what am I going to do unless I hit the turn, unless I catch that six or seven on the turn, then then what? You know, but then raising also seems a little suicidal because, you know, I make it seven, he goes all in. 
he probably has me beat. But, mm. you know, I mean, the description says the guy's tight. It doesn't say if he's, like, weak tight or tight aggressive. You know, in other words, I'd love to know more about this player. Is he someone that's going to barrel here with and, – and I'm not, and I'm not saying he shouldn't, but is he going to still be betting here as ace-king, ace-queen, even without hearts? Yeah. Um, you know, because that makes a big difference in his range right now when he's c-betting. Some guys are going to shut down. They're going to say, oh, this is all low cards, coordinated. They're not going to c-bet unless they have hearts or an overpair. So, you know, and which, so which kind of type player is he? Um, Greg wants to know if this is an older gentleman or a young German <laughs> pro or some hud well, stats, something. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, that's the big difference. I mean, like, you know, when we're talking online poker, you know you don't know those things. Now, maybe that's a, a you know, a, a name you've played against a lot online and you have a feel for those things. Sure. But even in a live game, even if I've just been moved to this table, you know, one orbit ago, I'm going to have more of a feel for what are the chances this guy has an ace, king, ace, queen, you know, type of hand and that he'll fold when I raise. You know, I might be seriously wrong, but at least I'll think I'll have some idea of how they might respond to that stuff. And that makes a huge difference if you have just that little bit of extra information. Because you can you can argue for every choice here. Um, and there's some validity to each of the four choices. Mm. You, you know, even going all in, you're like, well, what are we? We're not going to get called by worse. I'm like, no, you're not. But you're going to like guarantee that Ace King Ace Queen doesn't stick around and beat you on the turn of river, or they're going to pay too big a price to do it. Mm. So while I don't like any of the choices, I can find some good reasons supporting each. Where do you think you're leaning more often than not? I'm probably calling the most because I'm depending on my ability to read this player when I call and see how they react to it. And then um, also see how they you know, react to the next card off the deck as well. Mm -hmm. um, if this is someone, again, like if this is online, it's very different. And, and now I'm not going to pick up that extra information when I just call the flop. Sure. So, I mean, it's it's one of those spots where it's like, you know, you could argue for any one of these four choices. And this is also why these are so tough and why so many players, like you might have some of your students on your streams and stuff who are like really smart and understand all these concepts, but they don't necessarily get very good results in the real world. Because when you got situations like, this where there's two or more choices that all have some validity where you can argue that like oh this is why i should fold this is why i should call this is why i should raise a lot of players the first reason that pops into their head and then they're just like they go with that hmm. um and it's not just poker it's just life in general people are just like oh well i'm doing this because hmm. and it's like oh, okay that's a good reason to do that but did you think of these other reasons that either support your choice or other choices that you might have had. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, Bruce Lee. It says, be water, right? You have to be fluid. And, and a lot of times, too, like, we might choose to call here for X, Y, and Z reason, but then on the turn we get some other information where we have to change paths and we get information to start being aggressive or just to give up or what have you. Um, you have to be fluid, definitely. Six, is there anything to add, buddy? No, I think, I mean, this is just a pure call. Uh, by raising, we sometimes just get better to call. Yeah, sure, we deny equity, but that's only six cards. And if he does have that ace king or ace queen, most times he should feel some reluctance on this board to barrel on a lot of the turn cards that are going to be good for our range. A lot of low cards. Um, he may be reluctant to continue bluffing because we're going to have a lot of straight Chanel, um, two pair, etc. So, yeah, at the same time, I'm probably only calling here um in the reevaluating turns he's 4x and then like 80 percent at flop or something so i think when we raise we only get better to call and worse to fold decent so, amount yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, going to the chat too we got uh doug the thug says no new raise we have showdown value andy games poker said i would raise protect against other draws uh, not a lot of good turns cards against uh, turn cards except there are six or a seven yeah um that's not necessarily true i don't a two, know two or three is uh, okay um, tough spot all about my read on the razor raising is it a bad idea to see where tough spot so yeah a lot of good conversation here what hand do we represent by going all in um, and again I think that's probably not the best option but we do like Greg said push out all those hands that have great equity against us right well it's such a you know 
severe move that even I mean, are they going to call you with Ace King if they don't have two hearts? No, you know, they're they're, they're going to be like, what the heck can this guy have that he would shove all in with? And you're in the big blind hit too, like this kind of smacks you and combo like, draws, yeah, like combo know? draw type hands. So especially if they don't know you at all, um, you know, or if they think you're an idiot. <laughs> then they're just like <laughs> then they're just like oh this guy probably has something stupid like ace five he's jamming it in but that means i'm supposed to fold my ace king anyways yeah i mean i guess i, I make all my money in this game because people think i'm an indian let's uh, <laughs> let's, make the call. let's do it both contestants called yeah yeah he's by the way so let's do it all right <clears throat> So when the opponent bets big, it is at least somewhat likely that he is just very polarized and perhaps just only um, nut heavy, right? He may just have a whole lot of overpairs. Well, so if he has a whole lot of overpairs, I really don't perfect. want to jam or raise. Unless I thought he'd find a fold with pocket tens or pocket jacks. And I have a hard time believing anyone is folding pocket tens or pocket jacks. If they especially are a tight player, they've been patient, they've waited a while, they have an overpair. Like, those people just don't fold big pairs. So, I don't really like raising on the flop. Um, so, for that reason, we're either calling or we're folding. And, well, we can still call, right? We have six outs that are probably very clean. Every once in a while, we're against ace-king, and it just checks it behind on the turn in the river, and we win. So, for that reason, I'm just going to call in this scenario. It is worth mentioning, um, should we ever lead the flop? I, I would never lead the flop here because, like I already said, under the gun plus one's range should be very strong. And if his range is very strong, then we don't want to lead because ace-king's going to fold and the overpairs are not, and that lets the opponent play perfectly, right? So anyway, I love the idea of calling and then going from there, checking every turn. By the way, if I get a six or a seven on the turn, I'm not leading. I'm just going to check because this guy, or players like this guy, at least in my mind, the people I'm envisioning, they raise big pre-flop, they blast the flop, they blast the turn, they blast the river because they just think they have the nuts, even when they only have aces on a very coordinated board. So I check turn. If the opponent blasted again, I would just fold at this point. We were essentially calling to try to get there on the turn, but when he bets again on the turn, I have to assume that he has fewer combinations of ace-king because those would sometimes check, and more combinations of um, oh, the overpair type hands. So I check, and it checks through, so that's nice. River's a two. Should I check, bet 2,000, bet 4,000, or bet 6,000? Interesting, interesting. Check of the turn. Tell us a lot, guys. What are you guys doing? Anybody better? Right, this should be here? a good one. This should be interesting. What are we doing, BQ? Come on, buddy. Let us know. Check calls. Streaming into my chat. Station witness. says 6K fire. Mm. What are we getting called by when we go 6K? Check call, Texan says. Call, 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 check call, 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 Frosty. Frosty Cable guy betting 4K. Bluff catch, not value against those same overpairs, except, well, I don't want to go down that path until, we, until we're ready. Check, yep. check, 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 check. Press checking, ginger checking, Con Binkley checking. Jay Shane says bet 4K. Tina's betting 4K. What's up, Tina? Good to see you. 4K, in my opinion, Journey says. All right, what did you do, BQ? 2K for Stinky. BQ is checking. What's your dude doing? I don't see gold in here yet. He's thinking heavily. I um, shouldn't say what he's doing until he has a response. Says check. I bet 2K. Check. Gold's checking. My guy's checking too. Oh, Seven see, one. this is the problem. If we, because it could, this can go on forever with them tying. But it, it I is, think most it people is. are checking this though, right? Yeah. I agree. Check. Bet 2K and fold to a raise. We dictate our size and maybe get 8K to call a small bet. Dudorino says. Okay, Dudorino. Mm. What better Check. hand will fold if we bet? I don't think we're really turning this hand into a bluff to get better to fold, press. I think we're trying to eke thin value if we bet. Are you going for thin value, Greg? Well, that's a funny thing. Um, I go for thin value a lot more than I coach people to go for it. Okay. And that's because I get called a lot more because you're great yeah in other words if you and i <laughs> had sat down at a tournament and played exactly identical for mm -hmm. the last two hours mm -hmm. and now you and i are both betting in this spot i'm going to get called more than you will yeah because everyone wants to be great yes. awesome man raymer they want the boss <laughs> i mean it, it's it's just funny it's like i can sit there and fold every hand for an hour and then i raise and people think i'm trying to steal their blind that's funny it's I, like, yeah, I, 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 folded, I folded three orbits so I could set up this one blind side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Sixes and I get that a lot in the lower stakes online <laughs> stuff, and we host home games where a lot of our viewers get to play with us, and you see a lot of that too. Like a lot of it just, just like God, and nobody's I wanna, holding. I want to beat God's big tail. <laughs> yeah. I want to beat the Castle Man. I want to beat Crazy Sixes. Uh, I mean, I every now and then I still try to bluff, and then sometimes I get called, and I'm just like, Why? "Oh shit! I didn't, I didn't know I was going for value." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was the bad I mean, bluff. It was the rare bad I mean, bluff. I mean, last summer a guy called, you know, for all of his chips, and that's the only reason I thought the bluff would work is that it, given the size of the pot, it's like, oh, I can overbet the pot by just like ten, twenty percent, and it'll be his entire stack. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, he'll fold here to my ace ten, which is just ace high, and. And he sat there and talked and talked and just like, yeah, I'm sure you're trying to bully me and all this. And he finally put in his chips and I figured I was no good, but he had king queen high, you know, and oh, wow. like, <laughs> the king queen high for over back. And, and he just, you know, and it's like, well, you were right. I was trying to get you to fold, but, yeah. you know, instead he, he, you know, he value owned himself or whatever. Wow. Um, I mean, I've got Heroes. called by a guy, we were in an HPT years ago and I, put a guy I bet enough to put a guy all in on the river when we were like one table from the money hmm. and he called with Jack eye what and so it was just like live poker is wild man, there's easy money you know well I mean it the in, the in a sense the Jack eye wasn't I mean the, the board had ace king queen so hmm. the Jack eye was like the nut nothing sure. but it was but <laughs> it was still really wet board <clears throat> You know, but it's still just like, yeah, you know, and again, I'm like, I'm, I was trying to bluff there, too, because I had a queen. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, you know, so, you know, I wouldn't advise someone else to necessarily do that because they're not going to get the value, the, you know, the same thin value I can get. Sure. What size um, would you go if you were going to bet here? If I was, well, I would want to bet the same I always would, which is going to be closer to the 4,000 number mm -hmm. for this, you know, like half pot, give or take. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't want to necessarily bet smaller or bigger, um, you know, in the sense of, you know, keeping my range balance, so to speak, of, you know, not, you know, I don't want to change my betting size because of the strength of my hand. Sure, absolutely. But, but in a tournament, you know, if you're not playing with the same people, you know, that's the thing, like when, you know, I'm supposed to be in Vegas right now, you know, like maybe you guys are for the World Series. Yeah. And, you know, I'm playing with all these people that I've maybe never seen before and might never see again. And even if we have played together, it's been years ago and, and all this. And I don't have to like balance because they're not going to see the same situation often enough to realize that like, oh, he right. he always over bets when he has the nuts in this spot or he always bets small or whatever else. Mm -hmm. So you can fall into a pattern there. But if you're playing in your local poker room against the same people all, all the time, now avoiding those patterns is hugely important. Sure. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I, I live in Vegas. It's quiet here right now. <laughs> uh, well, you're, you're not out there playing four-handed cash? Oh, anymore. there's no way you're going to catch me at one of those seas <laughs> guard tables. There is no way. That looks horrible. It doesn't yeah, even look, look like terrible. fun. Well, the sneeze guard thing, the thing about I, that's security theater. The sneeze guard really doesn't do anything to protect you. Sure. Because it's the and, and, travel, right? Well, that's the, the latest research. I mean, the la I just submitted my recent article to Card Player. So that'll be out in a few weeks or whatever. But, uh, and it's only my personal opinion. And I'm not an epidemiologist, I'm not a virologist, but I do have a master's degree in biochemistry. And I worked for Big Pharma, you know, for, the last half of my legal career as a patent attorney and uh okay. so i've been following some of the research so i know enough to be dangerous so to speak sure. and uh the uh the main thing that's going to be the most helpful that we can all easily do is just wear the masks when we're in public indoors this concept you see this stuff on tv and they're like oh yelling at someone because they're walking down the beach without a mask or something like that's stupid you're, you're not going to catch this from me because I'm not wearing a mask when we're like in a outdoor public setting. Sure. If we just stay that six feet apart, you know, then unless I'm sneezing on you or whatever, not an issue. But all these examples of these super spreading events, like the, one of the famous ones was a choir group that was practicing together or rehearsing and they were indoors and they stayed six to 10 feet apart. They didn't shake hands. They didn't hug. They didn't do any of the physical contact stuff. 
but singing, they put out all those microscopic water droplets in a, in a much higher volume than you do from talking or breathing. Mm -hmm. And the room just fills up with those things invisibly. And so the one person who was sick with the virus gave it to most of the rest. Mm. Um, but if they'd been practicing outdoors, probably no one catches it. Because everything just dissipates so much more. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Now it just spreads out into the atmosphere. So when when we're, you know, walking down the sidewalk and you know, like if you're in, if you're on, you know, the strip in Vegas now and you're walking down the sidewalk people are walking by you without a mask on that shouldn't present any risk to you unless they sneeze or cough off and point it at you then maybe because now you're getting big droplets all at once but you know like here you're in your office now if you and i were both sitting in that office together all day but staying six feet apart mm -hmm. well if one of us has it he's going to fill up the air with those little droplets just from breathing and i heard like things circulate through the air conditioning well, like when you know they can. I mean, it. but, you know, anytime the, the more enclosed the space, the less airflow, mm -hmm. the more it tends to fill up with these droplets and then you're breathing it in. But you need a dose. It's not like one viral particle and you're sick. Mm -hmm. You need to get a dosage of about a thousand viral particles and, you know, like in a period of like a day or so. And so it's that building up in the room. So the way, you know, like someone else put it, one of the experts that I was listening to is like you and I go to the grocery store, we should be quite safe. You know, it's a big, it's an indoor space, but it's a big one, high ceilings, and we're there for a limited amount of time. So as we're breathing in the air, we could be breathing in some of those particles, but we're not going to get a sufficient dose to get sick. Hmm. But if you work at the store and now you're there for eight hours instead of for 20, 30 minutes. Just more exposure. Now it's, now you have the potential to to catch it because of those particles that are in that air all day long. So it's, it's a, that's why it's such a higher risk for those people. Not, it's not because they're touching more or anything like that. It's just because they're spending more time breathing in those minute doses. But I go there for 20, 30 minutes, I get my groceries, I leave, I come home. I didn't breathe in enough to catch it. Mm. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like playing four-handed, six-handed, eight-handed, I don't think any of that matters. I think it's, you know, and touching the cards and chips, not a big deal. It's it's just I'm more worried about how many people are in this poker room in general mm. and how tight it is, you know, right. for that for that number of people than I am whether I have four of them or eight of them at my table. For me, it's easy. Like I only leave the house to play live during the World Series for the most part. And so I'll just stay <laughs> home when the poker – there's a poker boom going on right now. I'll just stay home in it's my underwear and just, just print, yeah. my, print that money that way. It's so much easier. But, yeah, uh, definitely interesting. And I agree with you 100%. Like, if you're in an enclosed area for a long time, obviously yeah. you're getting more exposure, you're more dangerous. But if you're in and out, it makes a lot of sense. Well, oh, that's if we all wear the masks when we're indoors in public, that's the best thing we can do. Mm. I mean, you also still wash your hands. You know, so if you go to the poker room in Vegas to play, it's like, yeah, wash your hands. Try not to touch, like, suggest so what you're doing now with your hand on your chin. You got to learn to avoid that stuff when you're in those places and your hands might have contamination. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. <laughs> and, you wear your, and you wear your mask. And, and if you're not willing to wear your mask, don't go there. I hate wearing the mask. If I go to the grocery store, I put it on. And, that, and it doesn't protect me. It protects you. Because if I have it and don't know it, I'm breathing out those particles. But a lot less of them get out because the mask catches those microscopic particles, or at least, you know, a majority of them. So that's the only reason to wear the mask. The mask doesn't really do much to help you. So big aside, sorry. Oh, I moved you off of the main point. Hey, it's all good, buddy. No problem. And, and it's a, we'll do a COVID quiz, and that'll be the tiebreaker. That'll be the tiebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> Were you guys listening? How much particulates does it take? Uh, all right, guys, let's go with the check. Really yeah, I think I'm a check here as well. I mean, I could make a case for maybe block betting and maybe getting called by the ace four is a spot, but I don't think he ever has like under pairs. I guess pocket three, some guys might four X to small pocket pairs and things like that, mm -hmm. maybe sixes or something like that. Uh, but it feels like he a lot of, has a lot of ace highs and some hands he might turn into bluffs like ace king, ace jack, some things like that. 
Um, do you think he ever checks back nines, tens, jacks just yeah. because one over came on a turn? I think that happens sometimes, but I also think. But I think I feel like people should still be betting here for protection when it's so wet with some of the straight draws and flush draws here. So yeah, nines and tens might go for. I don't even know if that's yeah. the end value, right? We flatted the flop, so we and didn't bet the turn and all that. So we have a lot, right. and if we check here, we have we a have lot of single paired hands, right? That nine. Yeah, I know. Beat. People in my chat are advocating a big bet. I mean, hearts do miss, and maybe we do get bluff call. You know, mm-hmm. uh, buy some ace highs when heart draws miss. Um, so, uh, you know, I can almost see betting 4K, but, you know, probably go with the check here and then just bluff catch. Right, Even though I don't, you know, let's do it. I, I agree with you unless we know more this about the opponent. Is- yeah, yeah I agree. Unless we're specifically exploiting. Is an interesting spot because if the opponent does have right, ace king, it. he's going to fold any bet, right? So Boom. when I bet, what am I really trying to accomplish? Well, I'm trying to get called by a made hand, but notice the opponent probably doesn't have very many made hands, right? So the interesting question. So the only bet size like, that has okay, any merit whatsoever in my like mind like is 2,000 because that, that will occasionally get <laughs> hero called by ace king. But even then, that's really optimistic i mean i guess every once in a while he has like ace five suited that raised preflop blasted the flop so maybe we'll get called by that too if i bet two thousand that said i think checking is probably just better because i'm not at all convinced that the opponent does not have a hand like nines right a lot of people raise nines preflop blast the flop check on a quote-unquote scary turn even though it's not actually all that scary because i have almost no queens and then they'll um, just check behind on the river and we don't lose more money whereas if i bet those are never folding for a small bet so then I guess we should ask, should I bet big as a bluff? Well, I also think no, because some of these people will, again, just never fold with jacks, and the opponent could also just have aces that got a little bit scared on the turn for whatever reason. So I'm just playing my hand as a very clear marginal made hand, and I love the check. And now, the opponent does something a little bit odd. Now he blasts it again. Should I fold, call, or go all in? Woo. Interesting spot. Interesting spot. Guys, what are you doing out in the chat? Goal, what are you doing, buddy? Uh, somebody wants to say you like 4K on the river. I'll catch up in chat. Um, where Doug the Thug deals are using a bottle of hand sanitizer as a dealer button. I actually saw that in the news. Um, I think that's kind of funny and bang, kind of works. My cash, yep. thank you for that host, buddy. Wow. Hey, cash, what's up, buddy? Wow. Wow. Uh, I like the comment in the chat about the guy didn't want to wear the mask because he didn't want to cover up the beautiful. Right. <laughs> I worked hard making this look good. Uh, that's funny. Uh, this is why Sub Ewan wanted a bet to protect himself from facing this giant raise. So do, wait a minute, what are our, BQ, what are we doing now? All right, BQ, I'm not going to say what he's doing. What's your guy doing? Jeff Gem I says he's folding things. now. Aces through tens is what he's repping. Hmm. Hmm. Fold says jellyfish guy. I don't think a type player takes this line as a bluff. Too many better hands in his range. Fold from ginger. Matt says this bet polarized to nuts or miss flush bluff. Hmm. Almost want to call this says Matt. Go. What are you doing out there? Hold him nuts. He's holding his nuts. Thinks he's bluffing. Goal is side folding. Ooh, this is very split. I'm seeing some folds. BQ is folding here. They're both um, folding. They're both folding off. Wow. Peace. Fold, we missed a chance to make Jax versus Nines fold, in my opinion. He's got us. Okay, Shane, bluff catching. Bluff says, K Jack of Hearts is my guest. Just a call. Too big for a value bet. Hearts Kyo. confirms. We have to fold. Shit. Don't... I mean, this guy 4X went 2,400 on the flop and then checks turn and bombs the river, and he's a tight player. Woof. I mean, my thoughts is like, since people were saying tens through aces, right? Like aces and kings never; those always bet the turn. Queens probably bet the turn against the big blind when it's such a draw-heavy board, and that you know we have range advantage on this flop from the big blind. Um, so those are out. Tens, nines, and jacks maybe, and then a lot of missed flush shots. So like I, I'm calling here. I, I, I didn't, can't I see didn't catch what, what. What kind of a did? did Jonathan, specify what kind of tournament this was. Five thousand. It's a five k. Okay, so we can assume this guy's not likely to just be a total idiot. Not a five k, right? One right? k. They're still pretty you soft, know. right? 
I mean, you can get, you can find anything anywhere, but sure. you know, the, high, the higher the higher the buy-in, the less likely uh, that it's. I mean, that's there's a big difference. I mean, the main event at the World Series in the 1500s and below, those all have soft fields. Mm -hmm. But then you get even to the 3,000 buy-in at the World Series, then those fields are massively tougher. Yeah, it gets expensive to play, yeah. right? Absolutely. No well, it's more. Not just, I mean, but the 10K main event, you still get tons of that's weak players satellite winners and people taking a shot at the dream right exactly yeah. you know but when you're doing the three and 5k buy-in no limit events those fields tend to be very tough mm -hmm. i mean literally average skill level is potentially double mm -hmm. you know depending on i mean how do you measure skill i don't know what kind of numbers you could put on to call something double or not but you know there's a huge huge increase in the skill level at those intermediate buy-ins and then the other big ones that aren't the main event obviously when they do 25k six max and stuff those are massive yeah those are crazy those are very those are very few rich fish you know we did one of these quizzes from jonathan uh, a few months back he was talking about a soft 25k i was like i don't in know florida i don't know yeah. about soft 25k <laughs> <I'm never laughs> expensive. well you know relative to the average 25k sure, sure. there's got to be a soft one somewhere but <laughs> But that's relative. I mean, that soft 25K might be equal to the toughest 1500 ever. Sure. Yeah, that's what I like said relative to your skill level as well. All right, Fossil Man, we putting on the glasses here and tank jamming here. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, again, it's like what kind of tight player, uh, you know, if this had been like a seniors event, which I can play in now for several years, I would have been a lot more inclined to value bet like the 4k because those guys will check back the ace king and the tens and the nines and stuff you know some of the ones that beat me but also all the ones that i'm beating but they'll call with all of those um in this spot where we've checked and tight bet 7k and it's a five thousand dollar buy-in i'm leaning heavily towards fold i just mm -hmm. i don't see this being like let's turn my ace king into a bluff type spot you know, if it is, it would take a great read for me to think that I should call here. Interesting. You know, some, kind of, some kind of live tell or something. Uh, Goal, the guy who's playing for the quiz, says he's a tight player. He checked the turn to try and get value from us on the river. Player was wanting to, to stab at the river. Tight player has it here. He agrees. What do you think, Sixes? Tough, man, because I feel like uh, people would be betting their overpairs on the turn for protection. I guess even Jonathan mentioned some guys can check back on turn maybe deceptively and not want to play too big of a pot here um by going bet and getting check raised on turn so um i just think that's lower frequency i think a lot of people are just going to bet bet um there are some hard draws some nut flush draws you can have that might just bluff river here oh man this is a tough spot i think probably just folds but i'm very close to calling here man i'm the only station Let's see what I happens. think I mean it's it's really hard to fold. Like he should, I would assume he would just be betting all his good value hands, and then Ace King Ace Jack would. I don't know. All right. I mean, cool. I would I would be betting his hand. You know, if I had the nines, tens, Jack. Would you, would you go this you know, size in his X. spot? What size would you go in his spot? I I might go this size depending upon what I think you in the right. blind. Because, and and I and I tend to always see bet heads up, so I would have bet this flop whether I had anything or not, right. and then I tend to check the turn fairly often, because if I don't have it, I'm wanting to get the free card, and therefore I have to check a lot when I do have it to be more balanced, and then I'm going for my value on the river. So this is a line I take with a lot of my good hands. You know, if I had three queens, I probably would have bet the turn because now I'm hoping to get all your chips. Mm -hmm. So right. I'll risk not I'll risk missing some value in order to go for the max value when I've got a nutted hand. But I would definitely be checking like my ace queen. I would check the turn a lot too. Um, it you know it just depends, but. That's why I admit it. As much as I like to think of it myself as a math player, I love the live reads so much. They're so invaluable <laughs> to me. Right. It makes it makes so many of these decisions so much easier when you're just like, yeah, I'm pretty sure this guy either has it or doesn't. Yeah. He's comfortable. He's uncomfortable. Interesting. All right, let's do it. Uh, folding. 
My guy's folding. Yeah. Your guy's folding. Uh, I'm a fold too. I'm the only caller. I know Jonathan likes to underwrap his hands and then never fold it. So I don't. I think he might call here. Well, it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. Right. This is a rough spot, and it's rougher than it may appear. Nice I think game. a lot of people just look nice at this and say, "Oh, easy fold," but I actually think it's closer to a call than it is to a fold because. Like I said, I think a lot of these people do value call, bet aces yeah. and kings and queens on the turn. So if he doesn't have aces, kings, or queens on the turn, what would he really be blasting the river with, right? And exactly. Yeah. I, I just don't see a lot of these players betting huge, or Good pot, job. you know, pot's pretty big, with a hand like jacks, tens, or nines, which is a hand that I thought he very easily could have. If he bets something like 4,000 <laughs> on the river, I'm either calling or raising as a bluff to try to get him off of those hands, right? I'm sorry, I'm either folding or raising as a bluff. I don't, I don't know if I said call or fold. Um, so I'm either folding or raising if he does bet small. But when he bets big, now I actually think he does have a hand, like ace-king, that decided, well, the only way I can win this pot is to raise, and then he decided to raise. Um, this is a scenario where live reads are very important. If you can look and tell the guy's bluffing, well, then easy call. If you can look and tell the guy's the nuts, well, then easy fold. And this is, again, one of these spots where I typically just turn into a calling station. I mean, we have a few things going against us, the fact that this guy is tight. But we have the, the turn check, which is really important and really valuable yeah. for me. Because, like I said, most people do indeed bet aces, kings, queens on the turn. And if you did have jacks, tens, nines, they wouldn't blast that on the river. They'd bet 3,500 or something. So it's one of these spots where whenever it just doesn't make sense, often it's a bluff. So... I like calling in these scenarios, but if you did select fold, like I think fold's fine, but I think whenever the turn checks through, we need to get our calling station shoes on. So I do call, and the opponent has a six, oddly six. played pocket sixes. I have, I mean, I guess he thought in his mind that I had what the hell kind of or nines that I would fold it. Uh, clearly not, because I called with sevens. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, what is he doing? So bla raising big preflop makes no sense. Blasting the flop makes no sense. Checking the turn, I guess that makes sense. Blasting the river doesn't make sense. The opponent played this hand very, very, very poorly. <laughs> okay, sixes is you. What, what, are you doing? what are you doing here with sixes? What's one, two, three. One, two, three. You know. <laughs> <laughs> the whole one, two, three, if I have this for sure. Uh... There's no way I'm, I'm, I'm betting. You know I'm betting turn 100%. Really interesting because like folding was eight points and calling was ten points and that is so close. Like obviously folding not a mistake, um, and it's interesting how two extreme different actions could be so close in points, right? <laughs> um, interesting. Well, um, it's like you know people talk about GTO poker all the time, mm -hmm. and I think you know I don't know about your students, but I know lots of people out there in general in the poker world think that. Like, oh, like if we did have poker solved and we do the GTO answer, they would think there's one answer here. Like the GTO computer would always do the same thing in the same situation. And it's like, no, no, no. GTO mixes it up. It, the answer for the GTO computer might be something like, 70, you know, 30, call 60, call 50 percent and fold 40 percent and jam 10 percent or something like that, even though it's the same scenario each time it happens. And it's that, you know, mixing up like that that tells you that there's never or almost never an exact one answer 100% to every, you know, every one of these strategy questions. I mean, obviously, if you have the nuts on the river and the other guy jams, calling is the only option. But uh, except in those kind of extreme spots, there's usually at least some percentage of the time that you're doing something else. Mm. Do you you said you find yourself to be a math player a decent amount of the time when you see yourself in these situations with a bunch of mixed frequencies? How do you decide which which path you're going to take in that moment? Do you flip a coin, well, look at your watch, look at the serial number on a chip? I know there's a bunch of different ways people do that. Yeah, I mean that's actually the where I'm using the the like the live tells mm. to decide which one's better this time. Mm. So I picked I was going to click fold mm. on this last question, mm. but you know, in a live game, I might be looking at that opponent and get a sense that like, oh, he kind of wants me to fold here. It's like his betting with sixes on the end is kind of an odd bet mm -hmm. because I don't think he would be expecting better hands to fold. Mm -hmm. Maybe he thinks he's getting pocket 
sevens or eight X to fold. But for the most part, he should be going for value with that bet. And so it's a very odd, to, to be honest, you'd almost think this can't be that good of a player mm-hmm. to, to bet pot like this on the end. Cause it's just like, what do you, you know, how many better hands can I have that are going to fold? But what what worse hands am I going to call you with? Yeah, you push out the five X and the four X hands by doing yeah. that, right? I mean, so, you might get called by those, but it's you know you meant hard, <laughs> sure. You know, but it's just overall, I just think that that's you know a losing bet with pocket sixes on the river, and and now that's part of the problem. It's like okay, so this isn't like a world class player making that size bet on the river with that hand. Now if he bets like the three thousand on the river. Now he can get called by ace high, 5x, 4x, pocket yeah. threes, you know, ace deuce, you know, hearts or something. He can mm-hmm. get called by several different worse hands. But, you know, for his 7,000 bet, how often is he going to get called by worse? And and how often, if ever, is he going to get the better hands to fold? Yeah. Pretty so funny. it's just, uh, I mean, he got our pocket sevens to fold. But, I mean, how much of our range is, is that one hand, you know? Sure, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Greg, you mentioned a few times regarding like live tails. Can you? I, mean, I don't want you to go like super in depth, but what would you be looking for, like in a spot like this? I don't get to play a ton of live poker. Um, I just study the game like a lot off the tables and don't get to play much live. So, in regards to live tails, is there anything you can maybe give players? Uh, it's just a small piece of advice. It's, it's, regarding it's, that? I can, but it's, it's it's just a hard thing to do because of it's. And it's like, it'd be kind of like me trying to tell you like, okay, here's how to be a better painter. And, yeah, you know, the there's these out. little details of brush strokes and how you're combining your colors and <laughs> da, 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 da. you know, I mean, it's like, of course, like we can talk about it and there's stuff to be learned, but it's really just a more an issue of practicing. And right. especially, you know, what everyone wants to do when they're playing live, that's what you do. That's how you make your money when you've folded. So, you know, here's this hand and, and two people playing it out and everyone else just sitting there. That's where you are watching both these guys and you are putting them on ranges and you are <clears throat> deciding, like, does this guy feel strong? Does he feel weak? And there's lots of specific things you can look for. Um, but it really is just practicing that kind of stuff when you and that's. The reason of when you see the guy who was constantly like on their phone as soon as they fold, that that means they're missing out on this. Mm-hmm. They're not getting that practice in. They are not learning your specific tells. Because no matter how good I am at this, if I'm the if I and I'm not anywhere close, but if I were the best in the world at reading tells, but now you sit down at the table with me in a tournament, and I've never seen you before. There's you know, the fact that I'm good at it generically doesn't mean I'm any good at reading you. Right. Good point. And and there are lots of these tells out there that like when you give it, it means strong. And when Toe gives the same tell off, it means he's weak. Um, some tells are more universal. And it's like, oh, if you see this, it tends to mean one thing or the other for almost everyone. Right. But like right now, when you're rubbing your chin and stuff like that, mm, they that call that a pacifying. Yeah. That's a pacifying tell. Mm, so anytime you're kind nice. of you know when someone's like rubbing the back of their hand as their hands are sitting on the on the rail, um, you know when they bring their hand up and start rubbing their chin and tugging their ear and any of those things where you're touching and stroking your yourself, that's pacifying. That means you're relieving tension. Just like what your mom did to you when you were a little baby crying. Ah. She's rubbing your back and calming because that touching calms you down. Mm -hmm. And we all do this all the time. It doesn't mean anything that important when we're like having a business meeting and I'm rubbing the back of my hand here. Right. You know, as we're talking, it doesn't mean that I'm trying to rip you off or anything (laughs) else. But it just means there's some tension. But it, what you'll find is that some players will pacify more when they're bluffing and weak. Some players will pacify more when they're strong and have a big hand. So that's not a universal tell. The fact that I start to see you pacifying doesn't mean you're strong or weak. But it might right. mean once I get to know you, it tends to mean one thing for you, even though it means something else for the guy next to you. Mm-hmm. I like um, that. That's so good. some some tells are not universal, and you need to know what they mean 
for each individual player. Some tells like if I see you breathing heavier, that's almost always you have a super strong hand. So like right now it's you know it's hard to tell on Zoom and stuff, but like you know right. I don't see any movement in your chest mm -hmm. from your breathing. But now if you hit a big adrenaline rush, and now you're, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the adrenaline rush almost always is not like, oh, my God, I'm going to try to pull a big bluff and I'm nervous. Mm -hmm. It's usually like I have a nut hand, like I flop the set, I flop the flush, you know, I look down pre-flop, I got two aces. It's a huge hand and, and that it's exciting. Mm -hmm. And so it causes the release of adrenaline that tell is more universal when you see that it always means they're excited shaking the main hands exceptions you know the shaking hands again that's the adrenaline makes your you know you lose fine motor control your small muscles get twitchy mm -hmm. the main exception to that one is i've seen that tell on people just because like especially in something like the main event it's like okay they folded the first five or six hands and now they're going to play one mm -hmm. And so they get that adrenaline rush because I'm, okay, I'm going to play my first pot, you know, in, in my first main event ever. 10K on the and line. It, I'm, calling, I'm calling a raise with seven and five suited. <clears throat> and it's not because I have a nut hand that, you know, but it's just that I'm going to play a pot now. Oh, my God, I'm playing. Because I want to be Fossil Man. Get, get uh, the story. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> you might get the adrenaline release. But, sure. and, and, and there's no cure for that either. Like if right. you were to find that you were doing that if you went to go play a big tournament and you said oh shit like i'm feeling that adrenaline rush mm -hmm. you know it's like there's nothing you can do to stop it except experience just the more mm -hmm. you do it the less it happens right because it's like been there done that you hear that jaybird if you're out there jaybird those cold showers <laughs> are bullshit Raymer just said you can't <laughs> control the ad adrenaline rush so those cold showers are just torture we have a buddy that we study with who's a firm believer in cold showers. I take him every day now. Get you, yeah, he's got all of us doing it. Uh, <laughs> to get your mind well, focused and ready for game and then also to be able to control your breathing when you're in a high-stress scenario. Um, well, so, yeah, I don't, I don't think that cold shower is going to be any good 30 minutes later when your body's warmed back up. That's true. Although I did not, not, the tournament the day after I took my first cold shower, so it has to be science, right, Greg? <laughs> well, it, it might have some benefits, but I don't think it's going to control your adrenaline rush tell. Sure. Sure. <laughs> All right, six. In the in the in the essence of uh, getting through the three quizzes at least today, I think we for a tie we should do random number generator coin flip it. Do it. Uh, you want to be one or two? Uh, two. All right, here we go. Generating it. Put it on screen. Yeah, we got a. Uh, oh, he BQ two. Sixes yep. wins the tiebreaker. It's a two. Oh, oh BQ, you win. <laughs> we, right, we have to do the tiebreaker. Good job. Buddy. Um, so let's go back here. Uh, how do we? So I guess just contact us, uh, BQ, and then we'll yeah, get your information. Greg, moment. how are we going to give away these books today? Just contact you directly. Do we have a, a link? When 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 we're all done today, just send me an email okay. with their email addresses, and DNB Publishing will send them the okay. uh, the ebooks. Cool. You know, so whether, yeah, I don't know if it's a link or if it's an attachment. I'm not sure, but. Cool. So BQ, well, make once sure we have for either me or Sixes, whoever's chat you're in right now, and uh, get your email address ready so we can get you that book. Congratulations, buddy. All right, man. You want to roll another one? Yeah, I picked that first one. Or did No, you picked that first one. I mean, we'll just do another uh, keyword. Pick your random. Oh, yeah, roll another one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Keyword is now Fossil Man. Put Fossil Man in the chat, and we'll pick two new people. Fossil man in the chat. We're going to pick two people to compete. We still <laughs> got some time, rigged. guys. Oh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> he lost the coin flip. Oh, shit. Well, he can go buy the ebook pretty cheap. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, guys. Hang on, guys. We might have to start it over. So let me see if this is working. It's working for me on my end. All right. Must working, be so following my chat and toast chat it's well. working now guys so if you guys were in the first couple minutes there and you put fossil man in double put it in there again just to make sure we caught you i see eligible users gaining up right now in the meantime yep. uh pick a new quiz yes sir cool um are we just gonna do them in order here i mean it's it's, it's whatever buddy we I can mean, do for us if you want 880 you you already know did we, did oh you, that's a cash game did you do it's that hypothetical one? cash no 
Oh, 880. I have done that, yes. Okay. That was the one I just clicked through as a test last night and got all 10s. I was so excited. And I got a 26 <laughs> on that one. What about uh, 875? Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Tampa WSOP 2020 for Ross. The Pocket 710. Mendo Bruce with the follow. Poker too easy. Thank you for those follows, guys. Make sure you're following these channels to enter the giveaways. And you ready to roll it, man? Let's roll uh, it. We're rolling it. Get in there in 30 seconds, two seconds. Oh, one second. oh it's Team Toe member you know, holding these nuts. Uh -oh. And it's Taters in my chat. Taters, let's uh -oh. go. All right, that was Julius, just said yeah, he buddy. was too pretty to hold him. He's nuts. That was a guy who said he was too pretty for the mask. <laughs> Is it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's on. A, he's part of my squad. And I'm sure someone who calls themselves a hold him, he's nuts. Is that just makes you think, pretty boy? I, I know him personally. You're you're a fine looking fellow, Julius. <laughs> he may well. He's probably better looking than me, but that's a low bar. But I would just, say the same thing about me. I would say though, someone who picks hold him, he's nuts. That just doesn't sound like the pretty boy option, you know. Like, let's call myself this, you know. <laughs> All right, hold nuts. Are you ready in the chat? I see you. I see you. All right, well, I'm, I got to reroll. I don't think my dude dude's not here, so I'm gonna reroll. Cool. I got to reroll. You got to be very active in chat and ready. Doug uh, says, "Thank you no for doing the stream." All right, re-rolling. While you're rolling, I'll go through chat. A bunch of fossil mans. Google RNG is rigged, says Trick. Box breathing is good. Who did goal? Uh, goal ice win in your chat. Who won it in your chat? Goal ice won last time. Did he win again? He can't win this one again. <laughs> we can't do it two times. Go for it. How how good do you <laughs> run in life, bro? He runs good in 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 giveaway Sheesh. in Bob, he, he runs like shit in the number. What generator. the hell kind of life is that? Should I let him? I mean, I got I got to roll it. Good. We got to give a bunch of people. Frosty stepping up to the plate. I'm sorry, go. Good boy. <laughs> All right, hold him. He's nuts. Says I was kidding. He was he was kidding about looking good. <laughs> so give yourself some credit, Julius. Don't All worry. Right. Like I, I haven't met a guy yet who isn't ugly. It's true. Well, even though even though most of you are better looking than me, you're still all ugly. Eh, you're a guy. You get those ones that I mean, you just gotta be security man. You know, if you're Brad Pitt, you're probably a pretty good looking guy. That's those I mean, are far you, and few between, right? Exactly. I don't. I'm surprised women find any of us attractive. This is true. <laughs> we're all good until we speak, I guess. All right. Which which one were we doing? I got uh, eight seventy five. Uh, all right. Let's do it. You ready? All right. Let's do it. This was a recent hand that I just played in the Hard Rock Tampa Bay World Series of Poker Circuit side event. It was a $2,200 buy-in, and we're about 60 big blinds deep. We are facing a 2.5x raise from the cutoff versus a player that thinks we're very aggressive. That's the read I have based on the reactions the player has been making and some comments they've made. Um, so they raise 2.5x and it folds to us and our options are going to be to call, to raise to 7.5x, or sorry, to raise to 7.5 big blinds or to raise to 9 big blinds. All right, guys. Yeah, Greg pointed out. We, I didn't even think about it. We're doing 7s again and we're in a similar spot. Uh, happens again <laughs> except now the toe army is raising more fuzzy cable guy slap nuts all out there raising eight bigs oh man what is your guy Jolly doing that frosty comes out firing bro jellyfish is calling sheesh based on the read yander says we're calling calling streaming through the chat eight for your guys calling poker. getting four bad so? would suck with this hand Frosty in my chat is three betting to nine bigs. Hold him, is nuts. What are you doing, buddy? Ginger calling. Now you said it calling. Out of position calling. Ooh, hold him, is nuts. Raising call, call, to call. eight bigs. We got the official answer. Uh, to a late position, raise. can we raise this, says Matt? Uh, the guy who thinks we are wow. aggro is going to call us lighter. Hmm. Calls. So I'm seeing a bunch of calls in my chat. And... Oh, yeah, but I see a handful of eight bigs, and Holding These Nuts is going with the eight big raise. Uh, that's funny. Your guy's going with eight bigs. My guy, Frosty, is going with nine. It's not messing around. So well, both of our players. Like line difference. Yeah. I, so I, I don't see how eight and nine can't get the same score. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I mean, I can't see a big argument why one's, like, way better than the other. Yeah. 
D Chips, newest member of the Toe Army. Going to nine as well. Uh, Players week tie, we should raise to nine if he was opening too much, falling too More calls. So, shove. What? Tie, T Pop. You trolling. You trolling. Um, <laughs> cool. Uh, you doing anything different here? Sixes? I think I'm just calling. Uh, three batting, he thinks we're aggro, so I think he might even have a wider four bat range. Mm hmm. Um, and I think we can play this spot even out of position. Um, I think his range is going to be wide enough. We're going to be able to continue on enough flops. Uh, I don't hate three betting though at all. Um, but yeah, I probably flat. How about yourself, Todd? What are you doing, buddy? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I think this is kind of similar spot to last time. A little, little shorter stacks, but I'm always flatting here. And I agree. I think if he thinks we're aggro, he might be a little too sticky. And then I'm going to have to fire a bunch of bullets, flop and turn. And. He's gonna call our three bat wider Look and everything. everything hell out of this pot. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just calling. Greg, you doing something different? Where's the Where's the fold button for nits? What? <laughs> uh, stop it's it. Not even an option. <laughs> I'm not saying I would pick it, but it ought to be there. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I, I, it's it's yeah. I, I for all the reasons you guys have mentioned. I mean, if we three bet, you know, eight or nine or someone in chat said it was seven and a half before. Yeah, he said seven and, eight, and a half. Yeah. Seven and a half versus nine. But for either of those, if he's going to four bet, his his reasonable four bet is just all in. So the only value to three betting is if we think he's folding a lot or if we're prepared to call the shove. And I don't think we're looking to like three bet call mm -hmm. all in with sevens. And if he thinks we're too aggro, then he's not folding much to the three bet. So unless we think we're going to three bet and then he's going to call and then he's going to fold when we see bet, unless he hits the flop, I don't see the value of raising. Yeah, I 100% I agree. All right. Uh, I'm going eight, though, because that's what Holden that said. You're going nine, huh, sixes? Oh, I thought we were going where we want to go. And then well, I think we got to yeah. let these guys play for their points. even though Oh, yeah, so they can see the point. Yeah. All right, Frosty. You and here, what are you? You're punting, Boro. Let's hey. go. I'm kidding. I'm let's kidding. go. All right, let's Raise go. Pigs. So this spot Nine is a pretty straightforward go. call this deep. Once we are shallower, I'm maybe, to, you know, 30 big blinds, we could argue three betting here to try to get a worse pair to jam or maybe an ace five suited. Nine is considered um, better than eight. You know, an ace four suited to jam on bit. us, you know, pocket throughs to sixes. But this deep, those hands are not going to do anything like that. Two points and to eight. we don't want to play a huge so pot out of do a tie this hand. So definitely That's just true. calling here. There is some argument to three bet some small pairs when you're deeper so that you have some board coverage and some sets on some of those smaller boards. So once in a blue moon, maybe you can three bet here. If you are, if you are, then I definitely want to see the larger three bet sizing of nine big blinds, not 7.5. Um, when we do 7.5, you're just getting, you're just giving them really good odds in position, deep stack, and you want to get some of those hands out there, fold out some equity, um, you know, get them off some 10 jack offsuit type hands, some king nine offsuit type hands, maybe king 10 offsuit. So if we are going to three bet, it's got to be a larger size nine, but I'm not crazy about it. I'm definitely just calling here. So we call, and the flop is 223 rainbow. Our opponent does a small C bet of 1.25 big blinds, and our options here are going to be to call, to check raise to 3.25 big blinds, check raise to 3.75 big blinds, or to check raise to 4.5 big blinds. All right, so like you said, uh, you got three points for the nine? Sixes? All right, I'm sorry. Yeah, my video wasn't timed up uh, the exact same. But yeah, we got three points. He's ahead by a point. We got two. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's nuts. We got work to do, buddy. We got work to do. <laughs> Let's go, Frosty. Let's see. All right, so now the question is, is do we flat this on a two, two, three? Do we raise it? And if we raise it, what size? Three bigs, four bigs, five bigs? What y'all think? Vice check going to four, Lucifer five, Poker Man four. Call for Poker Toots. I think Call still has a lot of overpairs, says Keo. Mm. Check rates four. Race to five, says Holden Mets. We got our official answer from Holden Me's Nuts. 
Bunch of fours, bunch of fives. Four and a half. Your dude goes five. Guy. He's uh, going off the charts here. Yeah, my guy's going four. Oh, another another interesting another, one. <laughs> another very interesting one. Which uh, you'd expect two. to be close on the scoring. We could end up with a tie again. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a real sweat. It's a real sweat. And most of my chat is saying uh, four. Holy's going four. Dudorino's going four. What are you doing here, Ship? Ship's calling. Um, Texans going for yeah we got a lot of, it's this is pretty mixed it's I'm pretty seeing mixed for a bunch of four and fives and I have a couple of threes streaming in there Uncle Lee and Sheriff's going three yeah it's four and call for me so all right um what are you thinking here Greg what do you like in this spot Very well, small this is spot. so strange like yeah the the one and he's am I reading this right there's yeah, one six and a half quarter pot in the pot and he's betting yeah quarter pot I mean it's uh and he thinks we're too aggro which if if i'm going to read a lot into that then it's like well he's betting small because we checked and he wants to give us the chance to check raise mm. and he wants the check raise um you know that's what i start to wonder when the description says he thinks you know we're aggro because it's just such an odd bet it's like it doesn't really you know he's not getting much value when we call with a worse hand and he's not charging a very good price if we are going to have hands with outs you know, so, I mean, part of our range would presumably be a couple of big cards here, like a couple of Broadway cards or something, you know, or, you know, two cards between, let's say, ace and nine. And and if those are all live against his hand, then you'd think he would want to charge us a little more rather than give us this great price to hit a six outer. Mm. So it's a very odd spot. Um, given the size of his bed, I would almost be inclined to call just because I want to see how he reacts mm. or make the small raise so that when he three bets, it's not as big. Keep the pot okay. also, huh? Right. Six. It's just an odd, I mean, I may be reading way too much in the description of the player. That's because you're alive, bro. Yeah, he's trying to figure out how to <laughs> exploit and do the best versus this player. You know, I think theoretically in a spot where on a paired board, you know, we're supposed to be I mean, the reg is just going to be betting quarter pot with a lot of his range. Mm. So we got to ask ourselves, does our hand want protection here? Um, you know, because there are going to be a lot of turn cards, any over pretty much he can have in his range to a seven uh, that he opens in that spot and he could just barrel a lot. Um, so are we going to just use this hand as a check call or do we want to check race for protection? Um, you know, and I think he's yeah. going to bet small with a lot of his range. This small. Yeah, for me, this lot. is sevens is kind of the murky one. Like eights, nines, tens, like that kind of stuff. I'm not worried as much uh, for protection, but sevens is like right in that fuzzy area where I think I lean toward raising this myself too for protection. Um, four X is five lines. Might have position. It's close for me between four and five. Uh, yeah. For me. Um, Three seems a little too small. So definitely close between four and five. I think I'd probably go somewhere in between four and five. Five in game, let's say five. I mean, we can have a lot of deuce X in our rage, and I think we would want to check raise our deuce X here as well um, to, you know, try to stack his over pairs and start building the pot when we're this deep effective. So if I had a deuce here, I would check raise, and I think we're kind of protected. So I would probably check raise for my sevens for value as well because you can call with ace fours, ace fives is ace. His two overs with the heart, um, spade, or club can call our check raise as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I think uh, I'm definitely should be. I think I want to raise here as well. Four. You're going four? Hold on, let's go on five. Uh, let's roll it. What did your guy do? Do you remember? Four. Four. So I'm going to click four anyway. So All yeah, right. let's five. Here it is. Let's find out. So this is definitely a Ooh. dream check raise spot. You got to go for it here would benefit a lot. Um, one of the first immediate things we're doing is we're folding out a lot of their equity. They're going to have so many hands like king eight offsuit, king nine offsuit, 10 jack off, nine, 10 off. And we can get a lot of these hands to fold. Even hands like 10 jack of hearts that don't have the back door, you know, king jack of hearts, even king queen of hearts, maybe will fold without the back door. Um, so we benefit a lot from that. We 
also are going to get called by some worse hands. You know, ace four, ace five is going to continue. And, you know, pairs such as fours, fives, sixes will also continue. So definitely getting a lot of value just folding out their equity and check raising here. And when we do check raise, we want to go the larger size, actually, um, the 4.5 big blind sizing. You'll see I actually went here 3.75. This was actually the sizing I used in game. And the reason I did that was I just, by force of habit, I went three times the size of their raise because lots of times that's pretty accurate. But as soon as I did that, I realized, whoa, this player's c-bet size was very small. Um, you know, they they didn't even c-bet a third of the pot. So when your opponent is c-betting this small, you need to make sure you're paying attention to the size of the pot and you need to increase your size. So I would like to see 4.5 big blinds here. Uh, as a secondary option, this would be the next best option. And going 3.25, I think, is just so small that it doesn't even accomplish anything. They're barely, we're barely folding out anything. So I, I'd almost prefer a check, or sorry, I'd prefer a call to such a small check raise sizing. But definitely a great check raise spot. So we go for the check raise, we get called, and the turn is a king of clubs, putting out a back or flush draw. So now our options are going to be to check to bet around a third of the pot block size, uh, five big blinds, to do a larger bet of 10 big blinds, or to do an over bet of 16 big blinds. Awkward. How many points was the uh, four worth? <laughs> the four was worth seven points. Ooh, we hopping in the lead. Oh yeah, he's got the lead now. I thought it was, uh, I read it wrong. I thought it was one point. So he's got the lead now. So Frosty. I have 12 total. Not 10. We're down two points. Ooh, here we go. Oh, Louis nuts. Oh, man. We're down here two we points. Here we go. Yeah. This is super awkward, though. Jellyfish says check, check, check. D-chips checking. Uh, 2x, maybe not. He's three. You guess image. Anyway, he's nine. So. Ewe. <laughs> Trying to be good giving his check raising range. 16 for check. him. He's going with the over bet. Mendebridge going five. The king is, a worse car is the worst card other than ace. Ooh. Eh. I'm seeing a uh, 10, 10, 10 check. 16 bags from Deuterino. Ooh. Shutting the shit okay. down. 16 from Smith. Lucifer says it's a hard spot. Home Nut says, could this be any harder? <laughs> <laughs> oh. The pressure's on. Pokemon says, this is where middling pairs, uh, Scimitars are in the bin. Uh, this is a hard hand. I'm glad we're doing this one. Lots of good comments in the chat. King is terrible turn indeed. And get my check, but I don't know if that's true. Says or the, I don't know if that's best. Says Yander. Check, 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 check. Um. Mm. Check, I feel like personally, I'm firing again. I think. Ah. Mm. Did I just check giving up? Uh, if he bets turn, are we gonna check call turn and then check if I go river and pray and then check and then pray? It just seems pretty hopeful that you know he, he just gives up uh, if he does bet the turn and how are we good? Yeah, super uncomfortable. I think I'm going ten bigs myself and then probably giving up a whole hell of a lot. Um, I think that's what my plan would be. Uh, drugs is checking, lots of checking, lots of checking in the toe army. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm, see pfft, I'm seeing some checks. I'm seeing some 10. I kind of want to block her back personally myself. Um, But I don't know what that really accomplishes that calls the flop. We don't get really called by too much worse. Um, He does have some floats, um, some ace high, some ace four, ace five. I guess our intention would just be to get those hands to fold, some ace jacks of spades and hearts and hands like that that might just give up when we go so small we keep his continuing range really wide to the check raise so i really don't want to just give up here because a king x of course he has that in a range but we still have two um pocket threes uh two x hands three x so um pocket threes i just think we should be probably betting again i'm just kind of torn on size 
hmm. maybe just going 10 and then kind of condensing his range and then probably giving out river. Did your guy already pick reasonable. an answer before you go too much further? Yeah. Okay. He did. My guy did not. I thought I saw him say 16 <laughs> and then caught in the chat that he said not official. No, he got, uh, that's, you can't. I'm, I'm laughing at Nucifer's comment. I'm liking Fossil Man's full pre-option now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's why I started laughing. It wasn't anything you said. Hold on, nice. <laughs> which way are you going? You going 16? <laughs> the time has come. Waiting so pace. He's going 16. He's sticking to it. All right, he's sticking with 16. My dude's going 10. We're going 10. Folding pre is up. What are you doing, Greg? How do you, what do you think about this spot on the turn? Because this is obviously very tricky. Yeah, I I think because I of the check raise on the flop, I think we need to bet again. Um, right. Because if we check here, then we're just saying, yeah. please take this take this away from me. <laughs> I don't well, want please, this please, please bet, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, the only reason to check here is if we think for some reason we're going to like check race jam or something like that, you know, right. and uh, therefore I think we're going to just keep firing and yeah, hopefully we get some of those ace jack, ace 10, ace queen type hands to fold mm -hmm. uh, a really good chance of getting things like the jack 10 suited unless they just, you know, happen to have the clubs. So I think we're going to bet the 10. I don't, the smaller bet we get. You know, it looks too fishy, gets too many calls. We don't yeah. get him to fold and deny him the equity. And the 16, you know, he's going to, if he's not going to, if he's going to do more than call, then he's going to shove whether we bet 10 or 16. So unless we're, you know, it's like, why put in 16 if we're going to fold to the jam? We can put in 10 and fold. I agree. I think 16, I think 10 accomplishes the same thing as 16. It's so 16, no yeah, bigger. exactly. All right, we're going 16, though, because that's what uh, Julie said. We're going 10. Let's do oh, it. Let's this might lead. be the catch Ready? up. Let's do it. So this oh, is definitely no. a spot oh, we're going to want to check goodness. a lot. <laughs> we got uh, goose egg. Whether saved. we have you, you know, got goose egg? a pair, yeah. like sevens, we or if we were bluffing we're with some sort of draw, <laughs> oh, no. we're going to want to do a lot of checking on this card. And the reason for that is this, this card like hits result. our opponent's like range dying. much heavier than it hits our range. <laughs> So when that happens, we're going to do a lot of checking with our entire range, whether we have it, have something of showdown like this, or if we were bluffing. Um, so this card, we're definitely checking on. If we were going to bet, then that would mean we're betting a very wide value range. You know, we're betting our trips, we're betting our boats, and we're also going to be betting hands like seven, sixes, fives, pocket eights. Uh, so if we're betting that wide of a value range, then we are going to want to go with a small bet here. So if we okay. do decide to bet, then going that one-third size, the five big blinds, is the size we'd want to take. Um, the next best option would be to do um, <laughs> 10 big blinds, which I'm really not crazy about. Uh, and the last option would be to overbet. This is just, there's no reason to overbet. We'd be putting in way too many chips into a pot with a hand that's not very strong, and it becomes a lose-lose situation. So, definitely checking here. Our opponent checks back, and the river is a three, putting two pairs on the board. And now our options are going to be to check, to do, again, a small block bet size of five big blinds, doing a larger bet of 11 big blinds or doing an over bet of 16 big blinds. All right, guys, check, check on the turn. And we are now tied again. We're what are y'all doing? <laughs> T-Chip says now he's betting 16. Now he's going for the over bet. There you go. Betting 11 now. Hold him his nuts, now <laughs> going says, 16. For the love of the stream, hold him his nuts. Get this right. <laughs> Ian's going check call. 11 for Mendo. Check call for Joe. How you bet, Killer Man? What size did you go, Killer Man? What'd you say? Smeef is going five. Grand 427. Thank you for that raid, buddy. 11 bigs, 11 bigs. Man, this is a day I've never seen so many. Usually you can see like a lot of. <laughs> I see so many different options this week. Five, six. First, she's, she's stroking. She's self soothing. <laughs> five bigs. She's okay. checking. I like that, Vice. 
That's Dark right. Soothing. <laughs> um. uh, hold up is not to change your name to Hold My Beer. Another good one. All in for poker. Thank you for that follow, buddy. Thank you guys for the support today. Pickle Rick with the 20 time. I see you. Five lines, ace high can cost us corn. 11, he thinks we're aggro. Bet bigger size, it looks more bluffy. Check for ginger. I got the whole range so of do I. on this one. I see everything in this, as well as mine. Uh, dude, Arena yeah. is going 16. Oh, man. Okay. All right, Greg, what do you like? I'm still waiting for Frosty. I'm waiting for Golden Nuts, too. Ignoring the thinks I'm aggro clue, mm -hmm. my normal bet sizing, I would normally bet here for value, and I would bet like eight, like in between the five and the 11, you know, like closer to half pot. Mm -hmm. um, the thinks I'm aggro part, though, makes me inclined to want to go for the big bet thinking that he's just as likely to call with ace high for, you know, 5, 11, or 16. Making it look a little bluffier. Because he thinks, because, yeah, you know, make it look like, oh, he's, you know, like, oh, he's got something stupid like 4, 5, you know, and he's just bluffing with, you know, total air at this point. Um, you know, so I'm, like I said, my, my normal choice, if there hadn't been these buttons to click, would have been about eight big blinds. But with that clue of thinks I'm aggro, it's going to be the 11 or the 16, because that's suggestive that we're going to get called by those big bets. Mm. And we're going to get called by the same hands for the bigger bets as we would for a smaller bet. We're certainly not getting better to fold. Sure. Hold him his nuts agrees. He's going 16. Ooh, Frosty went five. Ooh, interesting. Ooh, this, 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 there's going to no be tie. a winner. No tie. There is not going to be a tie. You'd love to see it. Uh, Frosty, you're going five. This is so confirmed. awkward. Um, you know what? I don't hate the five, to be honest. Um, I think we ensure we get called by an ace high more often. And then I feel like, you know, his um, if he did somehow have a pair over sevens, those hands are going to be not able to raise and we just get called. So we lose less um, in those situations if he ever does have. Um, a pair over seven somehow, and we get called by all the worst, and then some ace high. I just don't know if he's ever going that big. The only bluff we really have is four six four five, and it is polarizing. So I guess when we go big, he could call there, but I would want to get called by ace high even more. He goes small. So. I actually think I'm on Team Greg on this one. I think in game I would bet something like eight. I think sixty percent ish yeah. is right about where I would be for sure. Trying to I make sure be... that ace x still calls. I think if we yeah. go bigger than that, we start to push out ace x, unless this guy just right. is just straight tired of our shit. Like, you said whose quiz is this? This is Faraz Jaka. Faraz oh yeah, Jaka the, well the then toilet. it's sixteen. Yeah, it's sixteen. He's the toilet. <laughs> like that's his nickname. You know, I mean, if this was Jonathan Little's quiz, sixteen would not be the right answer. But <laughs> but, but again, for all those reasons and their image and reputation in the in the poker world, Faraz is going to get called by weaker hands betting sixteen than Jonathan Little would. Hmm. Or than almost anyone else would. Sure. Interesting. <laughs> All right, ready sixes. Yep. Frosty's going Drum five. Roll. You're going sixty. This is it. For Here the ebook, e let's do it. For an ebook, ready, go. Come on, Frosty. Ooh, I got eight. We got a six. Oh. Oh, we, got we a definitely six. got a bet here. Our opponent checking back the turn no. has basically capped their range. So I guess 11 it's pretty likely the they're going to be doing yeah, a lot of bets sense. with any pairs that were better than ours. Oh, you know, <clears> pocket <throat> eights and above, I would expect to at least see a small bet out of them on the turn. I think they're definitely betting a lot of their kings. And for them to check back, we are feeling pretty good about our hand. Sure, once in a while they're going to be pot controlling because they're scared to get double check raised. But nonetheless, that's not going to happen too often. And I think we're just missing out on a lot of value if we don't bet here. So definitely betting here. And I think the optimal sizing is going to be the 11 big blinds. We can go fairly large here because we are a bit polarized. Um, you know, at this point, our only over pairs that we didn't three bet preflop are pretty much, you know, sevens, eights, and then, you know, fives and sixes. So... You know, with sevens and eights, we're pretty much at the top of our range. But there's a chance we check raise with some king x. Um, we definitely have some two x that we might have slow played. We definitely have some three x. 
So with all those hands, I'm pretty happy going the large size of 11 big blinds. I don't like an overbet. I think an overbet, we're just putting in too many chips. Again, this hand is not that strong um, that we want to put that many chips in the pot. So um, I prefer overbetting than checking, but I still am not crazy about the overbet. Um, the other option would be the small block bet. That's okay. I mean, betting small is better than checking, but I really don't like betting small. I think we're just missing too much value. There's not a lot of bluffs that I think we're going to go small with. So it just doesn't make a lot of sense to go small. <laughs> People notice that Sixes was self-soothing right now since he lost that. He lost that battle. Yeah, well, so yeah. Let me find and we got called and our opponent mucked our hand and we won the oh. pot. There we go. There we go. Nice. Congratulations, Julius. Uh, I'll get your email address. I have it somewhere. And uh, cool. Um, sixes, I think that we'll do one more quiz for the book, but I think for the PC membership, we'll just have to do random draw. Normal That's cool. Style. Yeah, because we got one more quiz cool. for the book, and then we'll do a random draw for a PC, PC membership. membership at the end when we yep. switch it over. So this quiz will dictate the last whatever book. chat wins. Yep, the last book, and whoever's chat wins, uh, the loser has to run the last giveaway or something. Got it. You know, like we usually do. Cool. All right, let's do it. Uh, last quiz. You feeling brave and doing a saucy and auto? No, let's let uh, Greg pick one. Oh. Uh, can he see? Does he have access and he can see the ones you've done? He has access, but he can't see the ones that we've done because he has oh, the shit. guest login. Maybe he can see the stream and see maybe pick from the top if he would like, or we can pick one. It's it's no big deal. Yeah, either way. I'm, I'm trying to make it out here. Uh, yeah. Uh, while we're doing that, we're going to have to draw for a winner. So, next keyword. Yeah, you pick um, tiebreaker. Tiebreaker? Uh, yeah, all one word. All right, guys, tiebreaker in the chat. And we'll see who competes for the next. Greg, the Fossil Man, Raymer, book. Winning poker strategies, right? Winning tournament strategies? I'm trying to think of it off the top of my head. Let me look. I have it. Fossil Man's winning tournament strategies. There you go. Also, man. So I'm seeing a, I think it says 877, Jonathan Little, Queen 9. Eight, oh, that's already been done, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'm looking on my screen. Yeah, it's been done. It's been done. What's the one above it? Who's that? Pocket uh, Sixes Tournament. That is Assassinato. Assassinato. So we can get our brain melted. Oh, that's okay. I can't really hear when you guys are playing the audio. Yeah. So. so that's all right. I won't get melted. <laughs> <laughs> We'll give that a shot for pocket sixes. All right. Jason, so we'll do the. Uh, oh, no, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We've had sevens twice. Let's not do sixes. Yeah, that's a good point. Actually, I just realized. Let's. Uh... We scroll way down. We got like 848. I mean, most of them are going to be a saucy auto because we've been skipping them for volume purposes. But I think we got the volume work uh, out. Get a, get a tournament one that's uh, like, you know. Like a big ace type hand instead. All right. Let's go down a little bit and see what we can find. What about... God, we've done a lot of these sixes. Dude, we've been doing that. Yeah. It's kind of sick. Um, I see ace two of hearts from Jonathan Little. I see ace ten of diamonds from Jonathan Little. Ace jack from Matt Affleck. In, looks like the oh, ACR Millie. Which number? And sixes. When, sixes, if you scroll up a little, there was one that looked... Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Or, or this one, Jonathan Little, what is this, 810 or something? 810. No, 810, I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, 1K, Ace King, 810. Yeah, uh, that's perfect. Ace King. Yeah, this is a good one. This is a good number as well. Let's do it. All right, cool. Uh, oh, we got to roll the giveaway. Yeah, it is Cyrus. Oh, my goodness. Legends of the Toe Army winning today. Cyrus, are you ready? You're up, buddy. Here it is. Hope you're not oh, hungover from yesterday. I don't know how well, you do. well, well. Pog. Greater is in there. Oh, I like it. Into that's the funny. Ring. Legend of my stream and legend of your stream. Yeah, enter the ring. Let me get my energy real quick. All right, man. I'm ready to play it when you are. All right, let me make sure he's here and everything. There it is. Oh, bring it, he says. I let's love it, go. dude. That's good karma. Awesome guy. All right, let's go. Uh, wait a minute, 810. I'm ready to play it when you are. One, two, three. Let's go. Here we have Ace King oh, of Clubs in the hijack seat. In a $1,000 tournament, I believe my next few quizzes are going to be for my $1,000 buy-in live tournament. 
Should we bold? Well, don't do that. Call, raise to 800 or raise to 1100. All right, guys, right away. Ace King suited, we are 100 bigs deep. 100 bigs deep. 400, what are we doing? Snap 1100. Yeah, I got 1100 streaming through my chat as well. Uh, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. Cyrus, I haven't seen the it. man of the hour going 11 as well. There's just all 11s. I got nothing else. Everyone's going 11. Cool. Yeah, I mean, amongst these choices, I'll pick 11, but in, in my sizing tends to be like either 900 or 1,000. Me too. I'll be 1,000 myself as well. Yeah, I'll probably be 1K here in, uh, this deep. So, yeah, let's instantly move on. This is a pretty simple decision. Everyone's doing 11. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. This is definitely a spot to raise to your standard preflop raise, which when you are deep stack should be to about three big blinds. Um, whenever you are deep, you want to be able to... You want to raise a little bit bigger because you want to be able to play bigger pots, right? And as long as you're not playing just like loads and loads and loads of hands to the point that uh, you're more so relying on just like winning lots of small pots as opposed to, you know, sometimes making the nuts and stacking your opponent. Wait, I see one vote I for think you probably would just prefer a bigger raise size because you're going to win more than your fair share of the pots, right? So anyway, I think especially in today's game, given people are not going to uh, fold to min raises like ever, uh, but they will. You will still have some fold equity for the eleven hundred. I think you just prefer to go eleven hundred in general. So we do eleven hundred, and now cut off tight aggressive player three bets to thirty three hundred. Mm. All right. Should we fold, call, re raise to seven thousand two hundred, <laughs> or re raise to ten thousand? And don't pay attention to that guy, Greg. He's our stream jester. He's not folding. <laughs> Gus says, why the nickname Fossil Man? Is that your appearance at the table? Um, is that, you, Gil, is that, you don't know? <laughs> I answer that question on my website at the FAC, but it's just that I have the uh, physical fossil card protector, you know, a little rock that I sit on top of the cards, it's a fossil. Yeah, and if you eliminate Greg from a live tournament, you get a you get to keep the fossil. Is that correct? Is that still a uh, almost always, yeah. almost always. There is the douchebag clause. Oh, sure. <laughs> fair. Totally fair. Yeah. You know, I mean, I hadn't thought of it till it first came up, but you know that kind of guy who comes to the table and is immediately insulting everybody. Sure. Yep. Because he oh, thinks yeah. like I'm gonna, you know, he thinks he's clever. Like I'm gonna put you all on tilt by talking smack, and you guys are gonna play bad. Mm. And of course, that guy's always just a natural born asshole. Just and now he has guy. an excuse. He just has an excuse uh, here. Like, oh, no, no. See, I'm not a jerk. I just, this is all strategy. But uh, so that guy ends up knocking me out of a tournament and I'm walking away from the table and he's like, hey, I thought we win the fossil. We knock you out. And I, I turned around and I just like dead eyed him just. This like, came like, <laughs> like five or six seconds, I just sat there just blank, you know, just. <laughs> and then I just, and then you know, and then I just said, "Douchebags don't get fossils." Oh, nice. <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Uh, and the whole table just went crazy, awesome. laughing. The guy next to him did one of those, like you know, when you kind of push someone's shoulder. Yeah. You know, and he's kind of like, and he's like, "Ah, yeah, Raymer pwned your ass," but then he like pushed so hard he almost knocked the guy off the chair. <laughs> so uh, you know, and then it's come up like two or three times since then. That's funny. It's got to do with the glasses too, right? You got the cool. Uh... Lizard yeah, there's no Lizard connection glasses. between the the fossil man nickname and the glasses. Oh. Those are, but uh, so did, did you have the fossil no. card protector long before you had the glasses? Yes, oh, I had the fossil card protector since about '96, oh, wow. Wow. and I didn't get the glasses until '02. I played the main event the first time in 2002, mm -hmm. and we had gone to Disney World, my wife and daughter and I, um, like a month or so before that, and since they spend a lot of time in the gift shops, that means I get to spend a lot of time in the gift shops. <laughs> and and as you might know, like some of the more modern rides, they actually build it so you exit the ride through the gift shop. Yep. Mm. And you know, just in case you didn't realize there was a gift shop there. And uh, so we're hanging out at the Tower of Terror ride gift shop and I see these glasses and I didn't wear sunglasses at the table, but I thought, oh, this would be, I'm playing the main event in a month. This would be funny. I'll get into a big pot i'll put these on and then when it finally happened and I, I get into a big pot where i've like raised a guy on the flop 
and now he's like tanking and he's sitting there looking down counting chips like how much for the raise and then how much do i have left and and i kind of reached into my pocket i had those uh, cargo shorts mm -hmm. reached in pulled up put those glasses on i just sat there staring at him and when he finally looked up you know because he'd just been staring down at his <laughs> chips for a while and he finally looks up and he's just like ah! and he like jumps back he it's like one of those things where he would have fallen over in his chair except you know you use your feet to catch underneath the table <laughs> so and then i just and then he folded and I just thought, whoa, well, this maybe this isn't just a one-time joke. And so every time I would get into a pot, I'd put them on. And it and really it just it didn't it annoys people. Yeah, it just makes them uncomfortable. And I and I think they fold a little bit more often mm. because you know, like there's so many marginal hands. Like I raise your blind, like and you have Jack Adolf suit. Do you defend? Like, yeah, it's not like it's wrong to defend, but it's not like folding is a mistake there either. Sure. And so I think people just fold it a little bit more often because as soon as they fold and the hands over, I take the glasses off and you don't have that annoying unblinking eyes staring at you. Right. Right. So, That's but I don't wear those anymore because they, uh, are dark sunglasses with a hologram sticker and it's just too easy to misread the board. That makes sense. That's why I don't wear sunglasses. I can't see. I'm blind. Actually, it's so hard. I don't even know if you can see like i got my blue shark optic shirt on because yeah. i if i'm like if you go watch the video of me from that uh, hpt event in january on their youtube live stream you'll see like i put on my blue sharks when i'm in the hand because those are poker glasses they're made for poker you you they hide your eyes but you don't have your vision diminished because they're not sunglasses it's a good product i have a have a lot of friends that work over there actually i've talked to them quite a bit yeah yeah Cool. Um, back to the quiz. Who's doing what here? Who's up? Cyrus, what are you doing, Cyrus? I don't think I saw an answer from you in this. Um, I do see a few raised 10Ks, one from drugs, one from Keo. Um, scrolling up to make sure. Cyrus, if I missed it. Oh, look, look, I think he said call. Call. Cyrus is calling. 10K for Pokemon, 10K for now you said it. Um, what are you doing, Sixes? I mean, uh, I think in this, I, I don't mind calling. Um, if When he does call the re-raise in position, if we make it 72, um, he's going to be getting a reasonable price if we play the position, and we can be in some pretty icky spots. By calling, we keep in some worse ace -X, king x that he will 3-bet and uses the 3-bet in position. Um, and our hand is going to be pretty under-repped. And just because we don't flop an ace or a king doesn't mean we can't continue um but yeah I, I really don't mind using at 100 big blinds this combo to call um but i could certainly get behind four betting um some opponents as well here. interesting i think i'm in the four bet category this deep uh actually just in general too i think i'm going 10k myself um fair enough hand too strong uh we do get called by worse still don't get me wrong with iggy i'm four betting every single time but you know. <laughs> sure i think i'm in the four bet category for sure yep what do you do in the spots, Greg? This is an interesting one. Yeah, it is another tough one because, like, if I do four by to ten thousand, and we started with like fifty thousand, right? Uh, looks like about forty. Yeah, so 40, 97, 97 yeah, I mean, lines. That, so I mean, that means you have to be planning on calling a shove. Mm. You know, I certainly am not going to bet to ten k and fold. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm willing to like, if I think I can call a five bet and still be in good enough shape then 10k is good um i don't like the 7200 for kind of the same reason right um i mean the big difference between the to me between the 7200 and the 10,000 would be because oh if i bet 10,000 i'm saying i have a big hand now i can fold to a shove um because you, you narrow the if, range more yeah i mean you know if betting to 7200 you might get you might be inducing some five bets because it looks kind of weak but it's also, again, like, what do you normally do? I mean, if you normally bet bigger and you make it 7,200, what is that? What message does that give? Mm -hmm. Or vice versa. Um, like, if I was going to re-raise here, my normal bet would be a little, be in between those two numbers again. Um, it'd be more than the 72 and then but less than 10. Um, yeah, I think I like 10 better. But yeah. I mean, 
To be honest, I'm I'm in I'm mostly going to be calling here. Plotting. Okay. Cool. You know, rather than re-raising because I don't necessarily yeah, I think I can place. get more I think I can get more value, you know, without playing this guy post flop than I can by getting it all in here and being maybe a tiny favorite on average. Any argument to pushing it harder because you're the false man and get called a lot wider and people just want to play pots with you? Well, the downside there is that let's say I make it this anywhere between that 72 and 10 mm -hmm. and I do get called more. Mm -hmm. I'm now in that tough spot when I don't hit anything on the flop. And you're out of position. Of, I'm still I'm still getting called more. Mm -hmm. And now if they, you know, so even when the flop comes something like, you know, jack nine six, I'm still getting called by pocket fives and stuff. Sure. Um, so it, it, it makes that kind of strange dynamic for me as well. Whereas if I just call here, like I like the comment about being we're under repping our hand almost. Mm -hmm. So when it does come ace or king, they can give us credit for an ace or a king, but they probably aren't going to give us credit for top top. Right. Totally fair. Totally fair. All right, cool. But, I mean, again, this is like these. That's why these quizzes are so tough mm -hmm. because you can come up with some reason to support almost every choice mm -hmm. and a lot i would of say folding is the, see, like folding folding is the only choice here that should give you like zero points like sure. if you're going to bet and then fold the one raise with ace king suited like well what are you waiting for <laughs> you're too tough. yeah and it's yeah, interesting because you'll the, say a lot of these quizzes have like 10 points versus eight points and that means like the eight yeah. point isn't necessarily a mistake you know just this coach didn't think that was the yeah. best option right well that's again like our gto computer that had solved poker would not always call or always reasons. raise any specific amount i don't think it would really ever have fold as an option mm -hmm. in its range but it some percentage of the time it would be calling and then and then it'll be raising different amounts different percentages of the time sure cool let's call and see what happens what did your what did your guy do he's calling Oh, okay. He's calling as well. Okay, we're calling. All right, let's do it. I typically lean towards calling in this scenario when we are very deep stacked with Ace King suited. If this was off suit, I'd be a little bit more inclined to four bet it because it plays slightly worse than the suited hand, right? When you have the suited hand, you just make flush draws sometimes, which are very, very easy to play. So I'm usually going to call here, but. Three betting is also perfectly fine. I have no problem with either play. From a GTO point of view, you probably just want to go ahead and put in the four bet. But um, again, there is value in not playing for all of your money. I mean, even though we are going to win these hands more than our fair share of the time, it's not like we just want to blast our stack in because if we do end up all in preflop, we're going to win you know 50-ish percent of the time. And uh, well, that means we're out 50-ish percent of the time, which is certainly not where we want to be. So I'm going to call and then I'm going to be checking every flop. So flop comes, jack, nine, two. Like I said, we're going to check. And now the opponent bets 2,300. Should we fold, call, raise to 5,800, or raise to 7,200? All right, guys, flop overs and a flush draw. Who's folding? Who's the guy out there? <laughs> Who's folding? Call, 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 uh, call, 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 Johnny calling. Right, what are we doing here, guys? Brad Dad calling. Drugs is calling. Cyrus is raising the 5,800. My man what? of the hour is What's raising What's up, it. chat? What the hell? Why are you guys being quiet, chat? Let's go. What are we doing here? Stop being shy. Call, call, Come call, chat, call, 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 call. face going 7,200. He's going the bigger bet. Lots of calls. Cyrus go. is going 58. And then a handful of 72s. Peanuts, 72. Jonesy's 58. Jeff yeah, says, if you fold, you're instantly 72. banned from the stream. He's got mod rights. He can do it. So take him seriously. Okay, Joker's calling. So I see one call and a bunch of check raises. I see mostly calls and a handful of check raises. I see all check raises, but like two people. BQ and Poker Joker. Everybody's like, build the pot. Um, I'm still waiting for our contestant okay. to answer. Mr. Virtues is also going 72. Jason, 72, if you want. If you want to get it all, Mr. Love Lovin says, I was all in preflop. Let's do this. He's not scared. <laughs> He's not scared. What do you like here, Toe? Uh, yeah, I think I would go probably 7,200. Um, I think 5,800 is just a little too small. And uh, 7,200 looks nice and juicy. I'm trying to set this point. When we go 7,200 and he calls and the turn is the three of hearts, what are you doing? You uh, still barreling? 
I don't want to give spoilers, but yes. Oh, okay. I'll just wait. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm talking like it's just us again, yes. like talking through hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gillis, right, Kyling, if you check raise this, you need to prepare to call off. Um, we probably should call where off. Where are our contestants at on this? Uh, my contestant says he's going 5,800. Uh, mine isn't sure yet. He's. Uh... In the he's still yeah, he's playing the, he's he's gonna wait i'm playing in a little he says call he's calling my contestants calling raise my kitchen okay. free river card indeed except uh but personally i would raise i'm playing the player jay little but personally i would raise with the intention of calling off pizza's going 7200 and calling it off all day all right greater's calling in my spot and your guys going 58. okay it will not be a tie mm -mm -mm. what did you uh what did you like here greg um, you know, the problem I have with the raising is both of these create a really awkward stack to pot ratio for the turn. You know, like if you make it 7,200, there's like 21,000 in the pot, but you're going to have like 29 in your stack. Um, so now you're in this spot where it's like almost, you have too many chips to just jam the turn, uh, whether you've missed or hit something. You know, it's like if you've missed, it's like I don't want to risk that much. If I've hit, I don't want to, you know, bet that much and make it where the guy's never going to fold a better and he's never going to call with a worse hand. Um, Fifty-eight hundred leaves a slightly better stack to pot ratio for the turn play. Um, if I was going to raise here, I would actually probably pick a bigger number, like mm -hmm. ten, and now Seven I can up. just jam pot sized on the turn i like that that's a very good point actually is a very good point i actually like that better too yeah i think i would be just calling here um ace and king high can be good uh we can always check call the turn damn near no matter what so, uh, instead of having to check raise and damn being in that interesting spot because if we check raise into blank to 72 like greg said the spr is going to be or do you want to bet small and then call off a jam with one to come if you miss uh, if there's 21 out there and he just jams the turn after you miss, it's pretty gross. I think calling gives us the best chance to see turn and river here. And sometimes still have the best hand with the best ace high. Um, and we don't really make too many worse hands full. So, yeah, I think I'm going to call here as well. Cool. All uh, right. Your guy was going to call? Yeah, we were going to call anyway. And then 50 and 50. Let's see. All right. Let's do it. So this is one of these spots where you want to be raising with some draws. Because if I had pocket jacks or pocket nines or pocket twos or jack nine suited, I want to be raising, right? Now let's take a second thing about how many combinations of those there are. There are three of each set, so that's nine, plus three jack nine suited. So that's 12 combinations of nut hands, which means we can have at most 24 combinations of bluffs. Well, all the 10-8 suited are going to want to raise. All the queen-10 suited are going to want to raise. So that's eight right there. And then some bad flush draws are going to want to raise, right? So we're already up to our, uh, well, that, that's already like 12-ish. Um, then you have to start looking for stuff like you know, slightly better flush draws, like the queen high flush draws, like queen, well, I guess queen 10 suited. It's a very good one. What about uh, stuff like king 10? What if we have king 10 of diamonds? Would we like to raise that? I mean, probably. What if we had um, king king 10 of clubs? I mean, the same thing, right? We'd probably want to go ahead and raise that too. And then all the ace -X. If we had the ace -X, well, we definitely want to raise the worst ace -X before we raise the best ace -X. So typically what I do in this scenario is I'm check calling with my ace high flush draws for the most part, especially the really good ones like ace, king, ace, queen, ace, 10, right? Those just have lots and lots of equity. And I'm usually raising the weaker draws. Otherwise, we're going to run into the problem where we just have a few too many draws in our raising range. And uh, we just don't have enough nut hands, right? So the ace, king of clubs usually just gets called in my mind and I'm raising the weaker draws because the weaker draws need fold equity. Whereas this ace king actually is the best hand. Sometimes we're against ace five or ace yeah. queen, or, you know, if, if we are against a hand like pocket tens, we have loads of equity. Whereas hand like ace four of clubs has less equity, right? As your draw has less equity, typically you need to at least consider raising it to uh, produce value from fold equity. Right. All right. So anyway, I'm going to be calling, checking every turn, Turns to three of hearts. I check. The opponent now bets 3,800. Oh, Another small bet. So small flop bet, small turn bet. Should we fold, call, raise to 9,200, or go all in? 
Yeah, so Jonathan brought up a really good point here where like his weaker flushes, he's more likely to raise, but this hand has so much equity in it. And uh, it's likely the best hand has some showdown value as well. But he likes yep. to call here uh, better than raise. Makes a lot of sense. Remember I said the three of hearts and it was weird. That it was the three of hearts here. I haven't taken this quiz. That was oh, funny. funny. <laughs> you, had some, you had some intuition. <laughs> Well, uh, you had the two ultimate blanks, the three of hearts and the three of spades. Yep, so 50, the ultimate 50, blanks. 50 50 if you pick the right ultimate blank. Right. That's funny. <laughs> uh, cool. What are you guys doing now, guys? Uh, just calling again. Fuzzy Cable Guy is folding. D Chip's calling. Clay Chip is calling. So Getting sick. even better. Oh. <laughs> Same. Call says Matt. If we raise, what's worse to call on? We block the nut clubs. Getting called by better only. Just call. Cyrus is calling. I like how Greater is not only saying what he's doing, but he's giving a very he's giving the explanation into his thought process into why he's doing what he's doing. And I think we should all do that more often so we can work on our thought processes and get better. So that's very good, man. Hundred percent agree. You know, I, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, when I do my live seminars and we do the, the live hand lab part, it's never like, you know, me telling the student, you should have raised or whatever, you know, you should have called, you should have folded. I'm always like, usually I'm like, why did you do that? Yep. Why did you pick what you picked? And it's like, okay, often I'm telling them, well, that is a good reason to call, but how about this reason, this reason? What about these other things? Did you think of those? Um, you know, and that's why, because it's not the decision you make it's why you made it sure. i mean you know the the so-called you know the million monkeys you know with the keyboards just hitting buttons randomly they're going to get a bunch of perfect scores because they just randomly click the right button three or four times in a row yeah. but that doesn't mean they know how to play poker sure and so a lot of the, not, if you can fix the thought process then the rest of the stuff kind of comes naturally right like what size to bet when to bet and yeah to bet I mean, you know, and all these answers too, we've seen where it's like, oh, one of them's 10 and one is eight, you know, or one is, you know, eight and one is seven. And so obviously the, the wrong answer wasn't so wrong. And it's really, why did you do it? Mm -hmm. And, and in the moment, you know, like your read on this opponent, and even if it's an online game, it's like whatever you've seen from them in the last, even if it's only been two orbits that you've been at the table that still will like oh this guy usually has been betting like making pot sized bets and now he keeps making smaller bets what does that suggest is he trying to bluff cheap or does that mean that he's trying to milk us because he flopped a set or something right it's, you know it's probably pretty polarized between those kinds of options if you don't know the guy well and it's online with no live tells but now you know that he probably isn't in the middle. He probably isn't there with the queen high flush draw or something, you know, or just, you know, ace nine or pocket sevens or something. If he's usually been betting big and now he's betting small. Yeah. So you, you take, you take all those things into account that, you know, every little bit you can take into account makes such a huge difference. Absolutely. Not much less of a guess, right? With every little variable you can kind of check Exactly. Off. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. My guy's going call. Your guy going call two sixes? Yes, sir. All right. Let's do it. So we're in this interesting scenario where I just told you I'm raising almost all my draws. And the draws I'm not raising are ones that have a lot of showdown value. So if I have a draw with a lot of showdown value like this, well, I actually still have the best hand sometimes, right? So I don't necessarily need to raise because I'm not going to make a jack fold. Our opponent's probably not betting the turn with, like, pocket sixes anymore so, we don't get to so make this is a situation decision. where yeah, weird, huh? when i raise i'm gonna get called by basically all better hands and all the worse hands the junkier draws are for the most part going to fold now that's what's gonna happen if i raise to a you know regular size like 9200 or 12,000. but if i go all in i actually think that is a viable option because now we're going to get draws well all the all the draws to fold that all have plenty of equity that may bluff me on the river even when they miss like say the opponent does have queen ten of hearts and um, he bet the turn. He's definitely going to bet the river, and I'm going to fold at that point on the river, right? So we get those hands to fold, which is great. If our opponent does happen to have one of the good flush draws, like 10-8 of clubs, he's going to fold. That hand has at least some equity. Not that I'm like worried about that hand, but again, that hand, that's a hand that will definitely bluff me on the river if, we, if he misses. Um, so I think in this scenario, I think all-in is actually reasonable. That said, 
I think the much better play in this spot is to just call, and that's because we're getting great odds. And, uh, you know, we still win at the showdown when it goes check-check a lot of the time. So that's going to be my plan in this scenario. If I had a jack, like say I had ace-jack, king-jack, queen-jack, I would definitely also check-call. Um, I'm not I'm not raising those because if I do raise those and we get called, we're, again, not loving it because our opponent's literally never folding like ace-jack, right? And that's, you know, one of the best hands I can have at this point. So I like the idea of just calling because my range is... My, mar my marginal made hands are very marginal to the point that they can't raise. And that means when I'm raising, it's going to be almost entirely draws. And if it's almost entirely draws, well, now, in, in theory, my opponent should just be calling me off all the time, which, you know, some people will. River's a jack. Good card. Um, you know, actually, this is a viable spot to lead, but I didn't even consider it when I was making this quiz. The reason this is a viable spot to lead is because, like I just, I just said, I would check call all jacks, right? Which means that when the jack comes... It, it makes all my opponents non-jack hands bluff catchers. The problem, though, I think with leading in the spot is that there's just too many potential busts to draw to the point where the opponent's still just never going to fold a, a nine. So I, I guess I do like a check. I check. The opponent checks behind. But this time we lose to pocket oh. aces. And I actually don't mind this check by pocket aces yeah. on this river because kind of like for me, jacks. the jack was a, a potential bluff card because I could have the jacks. It's a spot where the opponent can't really value bet anymore against a strong opponent because I am going to check raise here some portion of the time as a bluff. And that would be very, very bad for my opponent with aces, right? Because he'd probably need to fold because I'm check raising all my jacks and, um, you know, some combination of the bluffs. So I, I like the check here. If the river was a, an essentially blank card, though, like say a two or a three or a four or five, really any of those low cards, I do think that the pocket aces should go ahead and value bet again because like i said like my best hand here is a jack so whenever your opponent's best hand is a top pair type hand it's pretty free for you to go for the value bet with aces anyway check check and uh we don't lose any more money notice though if i just like four bet pre-flop we would have gotten it all in i would have been out if i check raise a flop we would have played a big pot it would have been out if i check raise a turn would have played a pot big pot it would have been out and would have gotten it in poorly Yep. And by just playing the passive strategy, we sideset the scenario. We lose 25 big blinds with a great hand, and we move, up, we move on with our lives and continue playing. Jonathan says uh, he likes this line because he didn't go broke, but Jonathan's rich. Like, he doesn't he fire <laughs> six bullets at this thing? What's up with that? Yeah. <laughs> but he's playing perfect. I like it. That was well played. Very well played. I, I think like you beat it. us, buddy. I think it's, uh, I think you got us. Yeah, greater one, that one. Uh, would have hit me up at, buddy. Congratulations. We'll get, I'll make sure, um, great, get you that ebook sent over. We'll just need your email and stuff. So, you know, uh, send me that. But that was fun today, man. Great. Super fun. That was fantastic, man. We really appreciate uh, you coming on and doing a study stream, man. I think it was fantastic. Well, thanks. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, absolutely amazing. It's, it's, a, it's a shame I, I can't look smarter by like being given more choices when there's <laughs> clearly only one correct answer. Yeah. You know, and then I can look more like a genius, but that's not poker. I mean, if I wasn't like trying to do things like sell my seminars, sell my books and stuff, I would want to be thought of as the biggest idiot in the poker world. Sure. Cause that's what would make me more money at the table. Sure. Yep. It's like, you don't, you know, so all the players out there, when you are, you know, like you start talking about like, well, I, you know, I called because that, you know, and you're like trying to like, you know, it's an ego thing. Like, Oh, I don't want to look stupid. It's like, don't know. You want to look stupid. Mm. If you're just playing poker and you're not trying to sell yourself as a teacher, you want to look like an idiot at the table because that's how you will make the most money at the table. Mm. Just be aware of your image and exploit. And it. yeah, take advantage of that and don't ever like, oh no, I'm gonna like make sure these guys know how smart I am. Like that might stroke your ego, but it will not pad your wallet. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. I agree. Um, any parting words, uh, Greg, anything else you want to leave the chat with? I know he's, uh, plugged. We have his website there. I just threw the guest command out. Yeah, Make sure to give him a follow on Twitter. Check out his website. If you're interested in coaching, uh, a fossil, the glasses, a little backstory, um, information and stuff there. Also, Thank you can get his eBooks e there as well, guys. Mm -hmm. So yeah, be sure to check out all his work there on his website. Yeah, oh, yeah the, book, the, the book is available. It's audio, you know, ebook and your traditional, you know, oh, nice. soft cover. So all three options are available. And like I said, DNB publishing is the publisher, but you also find that stuff in your normal venues, you know, Amazon and everything else to buy 
the physical stuff, the audio, the ebook, all those things on your normal channels to buy those types of materials. Um, and if anyone does want private coaching, I'm discounting my prices now since I got so much free time. So uh, they can go to my website. You'll see a, you know, just actually, you don't even have to go. It's just info at fossilmanpoker.com. And you can send me an email and, and reach out for that. Um, you might enjoy checking out the articles I write for Card Player Magazine now. I'm about 14, 15 articles in there. And uh, thanks for inviting me onto the stream, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, just a special thank you, Greg. Like, uh, I don't even know you realize you made my dream in 2009. <laughs> it, was a, it was the biggest thing that ever happened to me. And I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you. So I really appreciate you. And, um, I, and it, it was even more special this time to get to be with you again and hang out for a little while. It really made my day. Uh, I appreciate you very Thanks. much. Thank you for everything, Greg. I really owe you a lot. My pleasure. I mean, usually if I'm going to try to fulfill someone's dream, I want them to be like younger and prettier and, and for me to be <laughs> single and for was... me to be single. But uh, if it makes you any better, you know, it makes you feel but, better. I was a lot prettier 10 years ago and I was single. <laughs> uh, yeah, but neither of those worked for me. Yeah, I'm I tried. I tried. I mean, I am sure that you know if i was attracted to men i would be attracted to you thank you i appreciate that that means a lot you know it means a lot and and you know but and i'm married now and then so it really wouldn't have mattered <laughs> i lost my shot it's all right uh, i appreciate it guys exhibition one pc in my chat exhibition pc and sixes chat for a link to sign up for pokecoaching.com as well you get free quizzes free charts free chances for staking all that good stuff make sure you check it out definitely worth your time uh, as usual i put this on the youtube channel so if you missed any part of this you'd like to go back and see it then uh you can go ahead and check that out this one any of the ones we ever have if you have a question for any of us i will make sure either me sixes or the guest gets that so make sure you do that like my channel right here a little hard to hit the icon make sure you like crazy sixes channel as well sixes i think i'm gonna throw you the host for the pc.com giveaway yeah so uh know? yeah that works i'll go ahead and run that i'll pick you i'll pick a winner and uh yeah we'll do that cool. uh great thanks again everyone say My peace pleasure, out guys. to Greg, and uh yeah take care buddy thanks cool. a lot and, and thanks to all your audience they've been great i mean usually these chat streams have a lot more uh you know nastiness oh nice. you know, maybe that's just because uh, maybe it's because those are twitch streams for just like tournament you know things as opposed to here where this is your your people yeah these are our but communities. I, I, but really i appreciate community. your community and all the nice things that were said in the stream in the chat box so thank you very much and uh it was a great pleasure to be with you thank you yeah we don't put up with Thanks, this shit, Greg. we uh we'll insta ban these Snap guys ban. <laughs> we got a good yeah. thing going here <laughs> i agree right, buddy, I, I appreciate agree. you all right. uh, also, you, you know what's gonna happen to what? No, you know, uh, we're doing it a Zoom thing, so we might have to stick around and run it because when because you guys I leave... I have the cameras. Yeah, so if you guys leave, we have to just run it now. Go for it. I'm going to throw you the host right now and stay on camera. All right, yeah, that works because if you guys don't stay on camera, it messes up the little Good. video setting. I'm glad. I was thinking, I was like, oh, Good no. Thing. Good thinking. I'll throw it to you right now. All right, cool. All right. Yeah, hang around. All right, cool. All right, so, you get All right, so we got to the tow Army here. I want to make sure everyone gets an opportunity to get in this giveaway. So one last time for the special guest, the keyword will be Fossil Man. Uh, let me change that real quick. Uh, yeah, it'll be Fossil Man. Must be following my channel, must be following God's Big Toe. And make sure to get Fossil Man to follow on Twitter to keep up. He's going to be crushing the live scene when it's back, I'm sure. Fossil Man. You play any online at all, Greg? Yeah, I am now. Um, yeah, I need good. Man. I uh, I play on a site called Big Dog Poker. Okay. Dot net. They have a lot of uh, like PLO and Big O cash games. And then uh, there's a secret site I play on. A friend of mine runs a site where it's all his buddies. He he mostly plays at the uh, Ocean's Eleven Casino Live in San Diego. Okay. So he basically he created his own site with. It's not like the apps either. It's like a real site that he was able to get the software and uh, but it's only just his friends that are invited to play so it's basically he he invited all the uh you know softest players <laughs> from the live game you know since yeah. he can select and uh, so they play like plo big o and some horse cash games and then i do the poker stars home games i know guys that run tournaments and stuff 
Oh, that's awesome, man. So you uh, can, you know, just play there and then you settle up on the outside. Right. Obviously. Right. There's actually some great games that are mostly local players around here for cash, but they use those apps. Like yeah, one of them's on a, a Yeah, one of them's on an app called it's like the poker. It's mm. like poker with four R's. Oh, I've seen that poker R R R R yeah. Yeah, but I hate the software. It's like the games are apparently just you know, they play fairly big and super soft. Do they but, play from their phones generally or are they playing on uh can you download on a web based? I oh, have not been able to do it on my computer. Okay. Yeah. I so sure. I think I think people are mostly on uh, tablets. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. But you you tablets and phones are what is what the software is designed for. I I tried two different emulators on my PC, and it just wouldn't work right. It just and it's like and it's also the the software for that particular app I just hate because it will show you on the top half of the screen, like here's an image of the table and stuff. So you see who's at the table and stack sizes and the action and the pot size. And then down here in the bottom half of your screen is your cards. And then there'll be a little disc, a little round shaped button. Right. That all the players call a chip. Well, if you want to fold, you like put your finger here on the cards and you flick up. You know, on the touch screen. Oh, so you if you to... if you want to call, you put your finger on a little bit lower, where instead of touching your cards, it's touching that button, and yeah. you flick up like you're throwing the chip into the pot. And if you want to raise, you have to like change the number on that little button. So now, like, oh, instead of calling a hundred, you dial it up to three hundred, and now put your finger on that chip, and you flick up. But the problem is like. Misclicks, right? Yeah, it seems like he's Literally, I, I, I played, you know, one time, and this guy is like swearing in the chat box because he meant to fold, but he put his finger a little too low, put it on the chip instead of the cards, and flicked call seventeen hundred dollars. Yeah, yikes! You know, and then at that point, he then catches a turn card that like, oh, well, now I have too much equity. To the price did. So, uh, <laughs> now all of a sudden, instead of folding the flop, he's like getting all in and loses like $5,000. Yeah. That's all the book of God's work, right? They always give you that equity card on the turn. <laughs> like, oh man, now, I'm already committed. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, yeah no, and, and I, I guess if I had been like coaching him, standing behind him coaching him, I'd have been like, fold, fold on the flop. But now like, oh, we called by mistake. And we're like, yeah, you definitely call the jam on the turn. Yeah. Because yeah, you just picked up like a bunch of straight outs and you in a nut flush draw on the turn card. Oof. You know, playing PLO. And it's like, you got way too much equity to fold now. And, uh, you know, it's like, oh, you flop bottom two pair on a wet board fold. And it's like, <laughs> oh, wait, you, this was like your gin turn card other than like making the full house. The toe and, equity. Uh, Mm-hmm. And so it's yeah, you know, and so he loses five thousand bucks because of this misclick, and and I'm just like, this is so easy to do. So easy to do. Yeah, it sounded just, just like it. Anytime you're not really, I mean, you got to like put your finger down, start to go up to see whether it's the chip or the cards that starts to move with your finger. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, good, I have the right one, and then finish like the kind of have to pump motion. fake to see where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like go up a little and then, okay, now I can keep going because I've got the right. I mean, it's just so easy to misclick on that yeah, software that and it's really horrible. hard to read the screen. And then someone, you know, I just thought I'd give it a shot just to see if the software was better. I did the Poker Bros app. I didn't like that software either. You know, I was just doing some play money games mm-hmm. for fun just to try the app out. And and so I just, yeah, I don't like these phone apps. I just don't like the software itself. The I games. They're kind of risky can be, too, right? The, riskier than a big site um well i mean that's at the sites i play on well the big dog is a traditional site Mm -hmm. so i you know you send in the money in advance Mm -hmm. and you are trusting them and and the main reason i trust that site is because one of the main guys who runs it and owns it is a guy i know personally for a long time and i trust him very much right um so i'm not worried about him like screwing us over but uh, these apps, you're all settling up on the side. You know, so if I play on like a local friend of mine who runs his cash games on the poker app, um, it's all about 
you know, like if you're losing, like he settles up once a week on like Tuesdays or Wednesdays and he'll tell you like, Oh, like you're in for 600 loss right now. And he'll give you like the name of someone else in his club and have you send them 600 by PayPal or Venmo or something. Hmm. But they load you up. Yeah. Interesting. You know, so it's like, you know, if, if you're winning Jared and I'm losing, he might tell me to send you the money I've lost. Right. Just to settle it. You know, and then obviously some of the people are sending money to him because he is collecting rate mm -hmm. from these games. I mean, the app lets him dictate. It's a lot to rate. keep straight. Yeah, it's, it's like, well, it's, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, what happens is you can't have like, it's not like, you know, when you're playing on like poker stars in the day, you had money in your account. Mm -hmm. You could sit there and be ready to click the reload button in a cash game because you're like, oh, I just shoved all in on the turn. You know, if I see that I'm about to lose this pot, I can click reload and not even miss a hand. Sure. Because I'll have added the money to my stack before the next hand gets dealt. Mm -hmm. On his app, you can't do that. It's like, no, you have to like text him and say, like, give me another thousand. Mm -hmm. And then he, so you're sitting there missing a hand or two until he gets your text yeah, and then puts record. a that. And then, you know, so then he's just keeping track of how much you buy in for. And when you quit the game, the software tells them how many chips you have. And then the software is deducting the rake out of each pot. They don't, it doesn't say rake. If you look at the software, it says tip. <laughs> <laughs> With you know, but, rate, uh, yeah. And, and I was curious, like, well, how does the site really make any money? Cause it's like free download and all this, and there's no advertising. It's like, you know how you can buy the play money chips on poker stars. Mm -hmm. It's the same idea here. Like, the guy running this game is buying play money chips that he is transferring to your account. So that's how these apps are getting tons of money out of this it stuff. And that's why it, huh. yeah, I mean, the rake goes to him. They don't care about the rake, but the rake, he just knows that like he put you in for 500 and then another five and a thousand and you're in for 2000. And now when you quit, you have 1800 in your stack. You, you, you owe 200. But the rake has been taken out of the game. So all of us as a group at the end of the session are going to be negative, hmm. just like we would be on, on a big site like a Poker Stars or a Party Poker. Hmm. So he just has to keep track of how, how many chips you're in for, how many chips you had when you quit. You know, but the software will tell him, like, if you sit out and quit the cash game, the software tells him how many chips you had. Right. Okay. And so he knows because he had to approve each of your buy-ins, how much you bought in for, but in order to transfer those chips to you, he has to have those play money chips in his account. And so he has to constantly be buying more play money chips from the app. Mm -hmm. And that's where the app designers are making all their money. I think poker bros works the same way. It's really interesting. I didn't know it worked that way. So it's like Poker Bros creates the software and they run these games off of their server somewhere. And that's how they make all their money is from these play money. I mean, Poker Stars is kind of similar, but, you know, they rake the play money games. The, the, the These poker apps like Poker Bros, like you could host a game on one of these apps, set the tip at zero and there not be a rake. And you're just doing it to have a game with your buddies. Mm -hmm. And it's a rake free game, but someone's still going to have to give some money to that app so that you guys have play money chips ah, okay. to play that with. Yeah. And now I Poker think. Stars gives you some number of play money chips for free, but if that's not enough, they sell them to you. Hmm. Or if you want to play in the big play money games, if you instead of playing 100, 200 blinds, you want to play 100,000, 200,000 blinds, you, you know, I don't know what the pricing is, but you know, give them a hundred dollars and they give you 50 million chips or something. Hmm. Right. But you can't win anything. So it's not illegal. I can, I can do that. I can be sitting here buying play chips on poker stars right and left. And it's not illegal gambling because I can only lose. Right. It's no different than, <laughs> it, it's no different than me, like buying an extra life in candy crush or something. Sure. Same exact thing. Right. Just micro purchases. Yeah. Right. So that's, and so that's what poker stars rakes the play money games. It's interesting. It's really interesting. Interesting, right? Because all these the tournaments—that's a great business. Well, we have all these yeah. tournaments that I play with these different clubs on the PokerStars home games, mm -hmm. 
and I think it must be the minimum buy-in for a tournament because that's what everyone uses is 20,000 play money chips for the buy-in, mm -hmm. but the rake is 3,000. Mm -hmm. So if it was a winner-take-all tournament for the play money side, you would only win 17,000 play money chips from for Perfect. each player in the event. Because Poker Stars, it's always 17 plus 3. But again, I know lots of guys that do that. I even found some people that figured out how to do a home game, a cash game using the home games feature on poker stars. Huh. They keep track, like they limit themselves to like, oh, you buy in for 5,000 and one person's keeping track of this. And there's like the stats on your poker stars app that will count your hands for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so when everyone's done playing, he mm -hmm. has everyone give him their end totals. So he knows you bought in for 5,000 play money chips. Or if you did a rebuy, you know, it's 5,000 more. Mm -hmm. He gets everyone's total number of chips, calculates what was lost to the rake, and then is like, oh, if everyone played exactly 100 hands and there were, you know, 10 of us playing, then he just takes those lost chips and gives them back to everyone in equal amounts. Mm -hmm. You know, but if someone played more hands than someone else because you know like you quit early then he doesn't give you know so in other words he's kind of calculating the rake back on his own right so they're doing a cash game because they settle up on the side but they're able to do it even though poker stars is heavily raking the home game cash game very interesting yeah yeah but it takes that extra little bit of work on their part to recalculate for the all the chips lost to the rake right you know, and I played with him once because he's a friend of mine and he just wanted to surprise his buddies by having, because they do a Zoom chat like this yeah. while they play. Oh, that's fun. So then you can kind of even get a Oh, you can see all the players yeah. on the yeah. side and the table. Yeah. That's fun. That'd so I mean, it's like, they. I mean, we're playing technically like 50, 100 play chip blinds, but it's, they recalculate that to 50 cent and a dollar blinds, no limit hold them. Mm -hmm. At the end of the session, I was up like $74. But then with the rake back, it became almost a hundred. Okay. All right. Because you know, it's like, oh, I, I know I'm up seventy four right now. I don't know how this rake back thing's gonna work. It's new to me. And it was like, oh now it's like I'm being transferred ninety six bucks nice. on PayPal or Venmo or whatever it yeah. was. But right. so you, you go to that extra work, you can do all that stuff. And obviously you could also only rake back some of it if you wanted to do this as a money making opportunity. But now you have to go to all that work. I mean, the guy I know who runs the cash games on that poker app, he is working hard. He's making huge money. But it's he's because he's like, you, you, no, I mean, <laughs> you text him and say, give me 500 more. He needs to do it quickly because otherwise he's pissing off his customer. Sure. It's like, you know, yeah, I missed a whole orbit waiting for you to give me more chips. What the heck? Yeah, he's got um, me on it. But I mean, this game, and then it's also like, oh, wait, you're in pretty deep. Do I want to give you more? Are you going to pay me? Yeah. Is your marker good? <laughs> I mean, some of my friends that play that game regularly are up tens of thousands of dollars in the last couple of months. Um, and so obviously the host must be, you know, people must well. be owing quite a bit at the end of the week. So he's taking some risk if someone doesn't pay up. Right. But I say if everyone pays up in full, this guy's making at least ten thousand a week in rake. That's a lot of cheddar. So it's uh, it, you know, I don't know what legal risk he's taking, mm -hmm. but and there definitely must be some. Oh, absolutely. And he and he obviously he could get stiff, but boy, if, if someone stiffs him for thirty thousand, he's like, okay, so instead of making half a million a year, I made 450,000 right. <laughs> doing this for a year because I got stiffed by a couple of people for 50 K. Sure. Yeah. It's risk versus right. reward. All right. So, All right. So, you ready to pull the winner? I'm going to roll it. All right. Good luck, everyone. I'm rolling it now. Give you plenty of time. And here it is. Count Joe money. Make sure to whisper me, buddy. Congratulations. Uh, we're going to hook you up with that membership. Congratulations to all the winners and everyone who participated in today's stream. I think we all learned a lot. Uh, great. A lot of insight. I think the uh, live tail stuff and obviously, you know, um, your intellect with the game helped everybody a lot. And I uh, really you. appreciate it, buddy, man. That was awesome. And make sure to hit him up. I'm going to get out of here. Who should we kick the host to, Toe? I thought I saw Ryan Anyone? streaming, coincidentally. 
I mean, yeah, I don't have no problem kicking it over to Leah. Let me, because guys, I'm going to go right after this. I'm going to do some commentary for a final table with David Tuckman, Ryan LaPlante, and Michael Longcar. So I'm going to go eat real quick, come back in half an hour, be back on stream uh, doing some commentary work. Uh, so that should be fun. But um, yeah, Tuckman's great. Yeah, he's awesome, man. I love David Tuckman. I've been, he's, he's been around for so long and he's so solid. Oh, yeah. So, um, let me see what the channel is. Yep. Uh, I'm going to give Ryan the host. And yeah, I'll be back in a few guys. Um, but yeah, have a good one. And thank you again, Greg. My pleasure, gentlemen. Thank you. Take it, yep, easy. Take it easy. You too.